Welcome to the Field Club of Long Meadow, which is hosting the Western New England National Ranking Platform Tennis Tournament. My name is Matt Arciero, and I will be joined by Jeff Morneau in a second. Uh, but today we're bringing you quarterfinal action between Thomas Nolan and Anton Kotsenko versus... Gabriel Friedrich and Chris Humphreys. It's a beautiful day we have today here. 
on Saturday, November 19th. Uh, the, no clouds in the sky. It's about 40 degrees. And uh, we're looking forward to the match here. You'll see in the forecourt here on the right-hand side, Chris Humphreys in the blue shirt, long sleeve shirt, uh, dark hat, and his partner, Gabriel Friedrich, in the red hat. Humphreys is a lefty versus Thomas Nolan from your upper right, bouncing the ball. Looks like he's about to serve. And his partner, Anton Petsenko, in the orange shirt and white hat. Looks like they're talking some strategy before Nolan will serve the first point of the match. Good luck, guys. Have fun. It's a pretty quick point for that first one. And I'm joined here with Jeff Morneau. And, Jeff, we will have to see how uh, Thomas Nolan does because I know that he was icing his ankle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's that's going to be uh, a lot of um, stress on uh, Anton, certainly, right? Is it's going to be all for Senko, no and Nolan is just going to be lingering around in the back. Are you up for the Yeah. All right, I'll take it. We've got a no ad scoring situation going on here. We've got a serve. We're going due side. Senko certainly going to try to knock this. Right, switch, switch. He's got control. Yeah, and he's not uh he's not using this sidearm serve. He's looks like he's going traditional overhand serve. Yeah, and we'll see how uh, patient um, Nolan and Pacinco are, especially with Nolan and maybe his, his movement is compromised. So I see he's, he's going for that 
maybe not uh, yeah, the big advised. Yeah, I think right play, a little better footwork, and uh, that would have really, you know, that ball is going to go through. It's going to be almost impossible to volley that ball with a given Arsenko an opportunity to come back up to the net and take charge on one of those uh, deuce points. But we'll keep track of those. That's one of those 30-all, or rather deuce points, that uh, no ad scoring goes the way of Humphreys. Yeah, one nothing. Team Humphreys. Now Humphreys is not he's not playing with his typical partner. He said that uh Felipe Osis Koenig and he's playing with um his friend um Gabriel Friedrich. Yeah, they've split up to this There's the overhead by uh, Nolan. Got great hands, huh? Another good low return there. We got ourselves a one all. Yeah, Persenko's really, you know, he's in a difficult situation with a partner who really can't move that much. And you got the lefty righty combo in uh, Humphreys and Friedrich. So, uh, what do you think about that as far as, you know, the, the advantage? Do you think there's an advantage, Jeff, to uh, lefty righty? So the lefty-righty combination um, here at the field club is an advantage around this time of day for these types of matches. Once you get made today, it doesn't make too big of a difference, but here at the field club, uh, it's this time of day can be difficult inside the court because of the sun. You get the lefty-righty combo and you can just switch it. He's just dumping that serve in to get the point started. Yeah, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a very good serve. He doesn't really come in behind it ever either, regardless of who he's playing with. I mean, he's got great hands, so it's a little surprising to me that he hasn't you know, developed a little bit better of a serve. Here we go. Is this a little reminiscent with uh, maybe when um, 
with uh, you know Mark Parsons and, and Juan Araya doing the the one at net, one back. Yeah, I don't know if I put goal in the category of Mark Parsons <laughs> yeah, playing from playing back more, especially with a from the net that, uh, that Araya has. Um, but when he comes to the back, especially with uh, our person who has been playing all time, uh, and especially in the other category, one of the greatest of all time, off the of back screen, especially in the back Nolan doesn't quite have that same power. Certainly a consistent player will keep the ball in play. And it can hurt you, but not quite the same level as Parsons. Yeah, I'm just saying that from a strategy perspective, you know, they're, they're having to go to that one up, one back. Which yeah, is which is a which is a tactic that's not often employed. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether it's you know, something that they had to do or whether it's something that they decided to do. Right. All day, buddy. Oh, yeah. That is a slamma jamma right into the belly, into the gut. Humphreys had no problem with it. He recognizes that. that is, yeah. You're either going to get hit in the stomach or you're going to get the ball dropped on you like what just happened. Well, he, Humphreys took advantage of the lack of mobility and nice dropper. Yeah, Chris was working, he's getting a lot of spin off that overhead, and uh, Thomas couldn't control it. Did that ricochet off off of Pritsenko? I think we got a no-add scoring situation. And it looks like he just got hit again. That's two. That's the yeah, that, that is Carter putting up short lobs. I don't think they're going to talk about that at the changeover. All right, so Anton is making his presence known. We'll switch sides right here, take a little break. Why don't we talk a little bit about uh, about Goodroot? Goodroot. Goodroot is our sponsor for the tournament. Reshaping healthcare systems for good. Goodroot. Unbelievable. Great company. Can't uh, tournaments like this can't happen without them. Really happy that they're 
sponsoring again this year helped to really attract the top level competition that we have here and the, the players come and celebrate and puts on uh, the tournament's able to put on a good event as a result. And I will be right back as the play continues on. All right, so feed Rick to serve, sidearm serve. Miss off the return by Nolan. So Pratsenko, again, trying to maintain his presence up at the net, but got it caught there, somewhat in no man's land, off a good play by Friedrich. Good, good uh, net coverage by Humphreys and Friedrich to win that point. On second to serve. Again, off that dump of a serve, just trying to come in, maybe surprise their opponents. Fifteen love for Pratsenko Nolan. All right, so 30 love, Pratsenko, again, taking control of the net, doing the one up, one back with Thomas Nolan in the green, Pratsenko, Anton Pratsenko in the orange and white hat, serving at 40 love. Varying the serve there, going with the traditional overhead serve. And I believe they're doing this strategy because of Thomas Nolan hurting his ankle in the first uh, in the round of 16. And so Anton Pratsenko is again maintaining control at the net, and they've taken that game. So Friedrich and Humphreys are up 4-3 with Chris Humphreys to serve. So again, Chris Humphreys, his normal partner that he's typically typically been playing with in the ATP Tour, APTA Tour, is uh, Felipe Osses Koenig. As a team, they're ranked um, fifth nationally, and they've had a very busy and strong start to the year. Um, they got to the finals of Chicago Charities before losing to Johan Durant and Steve Mitchell. Um, and they beat some other nationally ranked teams, some top 10, top 10 teams in the nation, uh, Brian Compton and Graham McNerney. 
Um, and uh, along the way, um, and uh, Gabriel Friedrich's normal partner is Yancey Dennis. And uh, that team of Dan uh, Dennis and Friedrich are ranked 17th nationally. But they've they've decided to kind of split um, with Chris Humphreys playing with Friedrich this tournament. And Asis Koenig is playing with Dennis. And they're in a battle um, right now with uh, Dan Hansen and Andre Iverson. And I am back. Happy to be here with Longside, good friend. I think we played a tournament once as well. Maybe, maybe former partner. It's still up for debate. But here we've got 4-3 Humphreys in the first set. A really good match. Oh, he tries to go around the pole, just misses it, hits the side of the net. Would have been a spectacular shot, one that we would have had to have Shieldsy come up with a replay. Didn't happen, though, winning the net. 3-5. And that's exactly what we have, three serving five. So, Jeff, just one question for you. So, with um, you know, Chris playing with uh, Gabriel Friedrich, um, you know, he's kind of changing up partners. And uh, I know you were one to um, play with many different people. And yeah, I remember you even saying in, a, in one season you had a dozen different partners. So, yeah. so what's your thought about well, that? sometimes it's a result of people not wanting to play with you. And sometimes it's a result of people wanting to play with you. I won't say which one it was for me, but... I think it's good. I think it's really good. It's nice to see Humphreys. You know, he's kind of, he's really come a long way in the paddle scene over the last three or four years, dedicated himself to the sport. Now he's given back to Friedrich now, a little bit, giving him some, you know, some really good experience getting to play the you know, top teams with a top player. Um, you know, Friedrich certainly can more, can more than hold his own. I played against him myself with Hughes last, maybe last year or the year before. I think it was last year, and uh, Hughes and I came off the court very impressed with Friedrich's play, and knew that it, uh, in short order, he would be, you know, rising up the paddle ranks, and he's certainly done that. You can see just by the way he's playing today, and his ability to just, you know, get partners like Humphreys to play with him. It's a really good sign. One. Would you now consider with Humphreys and Fosses Koenig, they're ranked fifth nationally. Uh, you, you think um, Humphreys and Fosses Koenig, as far as the chance you mentioned, they might have a chance for you know, yeah. to get to the nationals. Yeah, they're hungry. They're hungry. They're young and hungry. They've seen, you know, they've seen a lot of teams uh, over the past five years come along, and uh, they're hungry. They're dedicated to the sport. They're dedicated to, you know, trying to make it to the top. And I think that they, you know, they want a national title. Anything anything short of that, I'm sure, is, you know, going to be a disappointment for them. Once you reach that level, that top five, top two, top eight level, you you're not just looking to get there. You're looking to you're looking to finish it and, and win the win a title. Really good shot there by Friedrich. Took the ball on the rise, got it down off of after a good lob, got it down at the feet of Pratsenko, who couldn't pick it up. Really good shot. Yeah, that's a big return. Big, big forehand. And I don't know what to say about that footwork there other than it was really bad by Nolan. I mean, that's a ball normally when he's not injured. He's, you know, that's an easy one for him. He's moving into it, probably even coming in behind it and taking a good rip out of it. He's got great ground strokes. It's tough right. here because Pertsenko just has to do so much in order for that team to be effective. And right now we're going to take a little break. 6-3, first set, Humphreys Friedrich.
All right, so we're back. Start of the second set in this quarterfinal match at the Western New England National Ranking Tournament. Gabriel Friedrich is serving. Sidearm serve, his partner, Chris Humphreys in the blue. Lefty, very good. He and his typical partner, Felipe Osses Koenig, ranked fifth in the nation. Ah, oh, that's a perfect pickup by Friedrich. 40 15. Their opponents are in the top right Anton Pretsenko and Thomas Nolan. Pretsenko's in the orange, Nolan is in the green. Nice drive by Pretsenko there. Caught Humphreys, but nice drive. Nice dig out by the, in the corner by Pretsenko. As we talked about, Thomas Nolan injured his ankle in the first round of the tournament. That lob goes long, and first game to Friedrich and Humphreys. They won the first set 6-3. They're up one love in the second set. Nolan, Thomas Nolan will be serving at love one. And Pratsenko and Nolan have been employing a one-up, one-back strategy. Nolan taking a practice serve, and here we are for the second game of the second set. Again, Anton Pratsenko taking really the net and having Thomas Nolan stay back behind him. It's a strategy not often used, but I think because of Nolan's mobility issues with his um, hurt ankle, he twisted his ankle in the first match. They're going with a different and different strategy, but now that Humphreys and Friedrich have taken the net, they're both back. Uh, and Humphreys misses that dropper. Very good return by Humphreys. Great lob by Friedrich. 
brings back Portsenko. He's trying to maintain, but he, he hits the, the lob long. Add in for Nolan. Again, Nolan taking a big swing at that. Maybe not playing as patient as he should be. So Patenko put pressure on Nolan and, and uh, um, Humphreys and Friedrich with that pin, hitting it very hard right at his opponent. Matt, and I am back. Sorry to leave you there on delay for a little bit. Uh, have to run the show on your own, but you're used to that on the paddle court, so I'm sure it's no different here. What do we got for a score here in the set right now? It is... One love, um, Humphreys and Friedrich. And they're in a tight... Yeah, it looks like Prasenko and Nolan have kept their strategy of Nolan literally doing nothing in the back. Just standing there, waiting for, I guess, them to hit some ball by Prasenko, but he's just moving so well. Now they're in the back, and it looks like that's going to be a oh, great dig out of there. Dig out of the corner there by Pretsenko with his eyes. The sun is coming out of that corner, so it's. I know that that's a tough shot this time of day over there. That's a great overhead from the backcourt by Nolan. Protsenko a chance to come up to the net. He closes in. We try to sneak free. We tries to sneak one by him cross court. Probably should have gone down the line there, but uh, tried to sneak one cross court. I think Protsenko would have been there anyway to drop it in, but point yeah, Nolan Protsenko. Yep. So it's one all. One all in the second. Yeah, they're definitely going to work Nolan on this. Oh, what a shot by Humphreys. Unbelievable spin right there. A lot of disguise to that as well. They had been working Nolan over. It looked like that was going to go to Nolan, but it didn't. It went to Pritsenko, and it was a winner. And then Pritsenko steps up. It's a great return. We got ourselves a 15 off. Oh! Fault. So they're having to go eye uh, a little bit with uh, the eye formation, or Australian formation against Patsenko's return. Yeah, it looked like it right there. They did try to mix it up after a, you know, the last time Patsenko returned. He hit a great return, so probably a good idea. Any way to mix it up it didn't work out, but certainly a good idea. Jerry Albright has entered the house. Um, probably not a good thing for him because he played match was pretty quick and he played Johan Durant. So that's a probably a sign that Albright's lost that match, but um, he's going to be getting some lunch and getting ready for the yeah, quarter two and two. with a 6 2 6 2 victory. Durant and Mitchell on to the semifinals. Hughes and Powers, the number two seed, I believe, also heading through to the semifinals. Yes. With a six, uh, six something, six something victory. Two and four. Rather routine for both, as would be sort of expected. The other two quarterfinal matches still out there. Certainly, both those matches are more competitive. Points are lasting longer. 
Well, I expect Nolan Pritsenko here this set to really tighten things up a little bit. Points are seem to be lasting a little longer, certainly this one. Yeah, I would say, Jeff, with the uh, with the you know one up one back formation that Pritsenko and Nolan have had, the points have not lasted very long. Would you agree with that as far as, you know, they're trying to speed it up to make the point shorter so that Thomas doesn't have to be moving as much? So, but it definitely has shortened the points. They're not grinding in typical paddle fashion. Yeah, especially on a warm day like this, it's very, sometimes very hard to put the ball away. You need a little nick like that to work out. Friedrich right there with a the soft touch right into the nick. Came out. Caught Nolan a little off guard, and they win that point. That's a game for uh, Humphreys and Friedrich to go up 2-1 in the second set. They won the first set 6-3. Absolutely. We've got some other sponsors that I'm familiar with. Uh, we've got Palm Ball. Great product. Great product. Steve Creelman, one of the inventors of the product. Very local, unique game, but a, yet another eye-hand coordination racket type sport. You should all check it out. Palm Ball. We'll go through the details later on during this event, but amazing product. Great sport. Really fun to play. Not in a competitive, quite competitive league at this level yet, but it is kind of an up-and-comer. Um, some people have equated it to the up and coming of the pickleball status in terms of where they think it's going to go into in the near future. So we'll see as that goes down the road. But Palm Ball, check it out online, check it out on Instagram, check it out on Facebook, and buy the product. You will not be disappointed. Palm ball, different than pickle. Yeah, I mean, there's so many eye-hand coordination racket sports games these days. But, um, you know, all the new ones, there's a lot of new ones that are out there. And palm ball certainly one of them. A little miscommunication there. I mean, Nolan and Nolan and Pratsenko don't play together all the time. They've certainly done it before. But I really think that that was probably Pratsenko's ball. Good step in on that by Thomas Nolan. Great dig out of the corner. Looking into the sun on that. It's a very good, uh, still a good get by him. Yeah. Oh, boy. He can go one way, but he can't go two. Thomas Nolan heading to the left. Picked up that first one. Couldn't come back and get that second one. Pratsenko was kind of caught. He's not the fleetest of foot, that Pratsenko, but um, certainly wasn't ready for that one. On opposite sides here. I, I don't actually think that this is a bad idea when they're in the back, to be honest with you. I really do think that Nolan being over on the backhand side might prove more effective for them because he's got such a good backhand. I think his backhand is more of a weapon than his forehand. Uh, but we'll see. Oh, they are now. That just was. That made them look like amateurs. Two pros on the other side, two amateurs on this side. It just didn't look good. They're not well, going to want to see that one on replay. Yeah, they're definitely taking advantage, right, of of Nolan's, you know, ankle and inability to move, his slowness, whatever you want to call it. Right now, it's just not. Uh, it's not spectacular. It's good to see that they took a little break right there. They were probably winded from having run around a bunch there. Great forehand there by Francisco. 
going to scrape that one down. And this is oh, that's a good dig, but dig. they are really just taking advantage. Out. Humphreys and Friedrich are feeling it right now. They're playing a little bit faster. I think that if Nolan and Protsenko want to get back into this match, they really need to take some time, slow things down, slow things down a little bit. Because Humphreys and Friedrich are just they just feel like they're rolling. I can't remember the last time they lost a point. Almost the perfect lob right there by Nolan. Very high, very deep, and it's even in the semi warm weather, it was still managed to stay inside the wires. And if it if it goes out of the court, it's your opponent's point, it, right? Gone. They're really picking their spots right now. They are finding the angles. They are hitting the lines. They're getting the ball past Pratsenko. It's really putting Nolan under a lot of pressure to be able to move around in the back, and he's just not able to do it. Yeah, don't you think as well, Jeff, that um, – Pratsenko with he's now maybe trying to force force things too much because of his oh, partners. What an unbelievable lob right there by yeah, Pratsenko. Runs back, one-handed backhand flick over a tall Humphreys head, wins the point. But if that's what it's going to take for them to win a point, it's going to be a very long second set for them. Nice shot there by Nolan. Sneaks it by. They're he's looking, he's right looking for applause right there. That's he the wants, one bright he spot. Wants, you, you know, you got to do – it's a good shot, but you got to be – the match has to be a little closer if you want to get the fans involved. Gary Weiner, tournament director of the 95s here in Longmeadow, Massachusetts at the Field Club, just walked into the house. All right, well, they just put the stamp on that game. So now Friedrich and Humphreys are up 4-1 in the second set. Yeah, they really need to slow things down right now if they want to get back into this thing. And uh, so we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little break, Matt. I'm going to leave you here on your own for a little bit, and maybe uh, my absence will make the heart grow fonder for the <laughs> Nolan Protsenko team, but we will see. You got it. So, again, we are in the quarterfinals of the Western New England National Ranking Tournament here in Longmeadow, Mass., at the Field Club of Longmeadow. Thomas Nolan, Nolan just served, one that almost hit the back screen, so I love 15, but then follows that up with a net cord winner for his serve, so it's 15-all. But unfortunately, he and Anton Pritsenko are down 1-4 in this second set, and they lost the first. They have been going with a one-up, one-back strategy because of Nolan's injuring himself in the first match of the day. But they're back now defending with Chris Humphreys. Chris, now the uh, one of the pros at Short Hills, one of the greatest platform tennis country clubs in New England, let outside New England in the entire country. Gotta love that. So let's give a big shout out to uh, all the members and fans of the Short Hills community for Chris Humphreys. Another shout out to some of my really good friends and one of my favorite people of all time to play with, Mike Stulak, a member of the, uh, with his lovely wife, Carrie Delmonico. Yeah! Also yeah. great platform yeah. tennis player, so a big shout out to them from Short Hills, as I'm sure that there's many of them watching this match right now, rooting on their pro, Chris Humphreys, as he... Looks like he's going to be making his way to the semifinals. And uh, if they do make it on through, do we know who they play, Matt? Do we have a sense as to whether that is the team of Hughes Powers? Or do they get the honor, privilege, and of playing the team of 
Durant, and Mitchell. Who they get the, they get the honors of playing Durant and Mitchell. Durant, Johan Durant, and Steve Mitchell. I like how you put the pronunciation there. Yeah, those are going to be going on a little later in the afternoon after this. There's going to be uh, – we've got nice lunch here, another great lunch year after year here in, East, in, in Longmeadow. We get great lunch provided by – the Log Cabin Delaney House uh, out of Holyoke with two from two of my really good friends as well, Mick Cordoff and Peter Ross Cotton, who do so much for uh, for the community in general. And year after year for the last 15 years, they have been providing uh, an exquisite lunch here for uh, the players and for the fans. So uh, that's going to happen. We're going to have a little break. Some backdrop matches will be going on. Uh, and then we'll be all fired up for the semifinal matches, which I think are supposed to start right around 2 o'clock. Uh, this match is not quite over, but um, certainly looks like it's going to be in the, in the near future. So. And, and, Jeff, just going back to your, uh, your friends in, at Short Hills and Mike Stulak, you've won a couple national championships with, with Mike Stulak. Is that correct? Uh, maybe one somewhere along, somewhere along the way. But he's got, he's, he's got many with many other people, um, as, does, as does Kerry Delmonico. So um, I'm, in the event that we did happen to win one, which I'm sure we did, I was, uh, I was nothing but uh, you know, probably standing on the sidelines, just kept enough balls in play so that we could get it done. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure that's its, true. But this yes. one uh, looks like these guys are really playing good. Humphrey. Oh, Ooh, Humphrey wow. Just, what a great coverage there. He He'll almost, go back up to the net. Good stuff. He almost had his partner in the face, though, with his racket. It was a little, yeah, little tenuous. Chargers in, and that's just a ball that Nolan just normally does not miss. That's right in his wheelhouse. That normally just gets blasted by somebody. All right, well, Matt, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go grab a little bite to eat myself right now, right before this match is over. I'm gonna let you finish this out for us, and we'll chat soon. You got it. We'll talk to you soon. So good volley right there by Humphreys to put the, the ball away. And now Humphreys and Friedrich are up in the second set, 5-2. They won the first set, 6-3. And they are a game away uh, to reaching the, the semifinals. And if they do advance, they will be meeting Johan Durant and Steve Mitchell. who are the number one seeds in this tournament. And the number two seeds are uh, John Hughes and Mark Powers. Again, Pritsenko starting the point with that serve and coming in the net. They're playing that one up, one back style. No one even taking that ball from the backcourt, but still does not even come in. He's letting Petsenko just control the net as much as he can. But again, it's a strategy I believe they're employing because of Nolan hurting his ankle. Um, they haven't had much success with it, with them being down 2-5 in the second set. Friedrich and Humphreys have just been very strong this whole match. Making their opponents move. That lob is in. 
Good lob. They're now taking over the net. We'll see if they, if Nolan jo joins his partner up at the net. Actually, looks like he's going to back up again and see if Pritsenko can work his magic up at the net with the one up, one back. Great overhead by Pratsenko to finish the point. Nolan putting up a very high lob, which is very effective to try to slow the point down. Have Humphreys be looking into the sun from that lob. And again, Pritsenko trying to control the net like Johan Durant would do. Good dig by Nolan coming in off that. Oh, and Patsenko hits it long. Good play by Thomas Nolan to come in off that waterfall overhead. But his partner couldn't uh, keep the forehand in. Here we go with the one up, one back. Great volley. Great court coverage by Pritsenko. The fans are trying to keep them in the match. Trying to encourage them. Again, Pratsenko in the orange, serving at 2-5. Thomas Nolan, his partner in the green. Against Chris Humphreys in the blue and Gabriel Friedrich in the red. Nice high lob by Nolan again for Humphreys to have to look into the sun. Partners need to communicate with each other to make sure who's taking the, the overhead. But Senko tries to sneak in a little blitz. But that's not effective. They're still in the backcourt. And Nolan misses that forehand. That forehand drive long. Chris Humphreys and his partner, Gabriel Friedrich, just again, content to make Anton Pritsenko work up at the net with this one-up, one-back strategy. They're going to look for their opportunity to try to get a lob over Anton, Anton's head. Try to get him to move as much as they can to then sneak the ball by and then take the net. Oh, that's a great shot. Beautiful cut backhand volley. Spun back into the net. Anton Pratsenko, very talented player. That ball was called long. Humphreys is questioning it. But the call stands. That hit a seam in the back screen. It went the other way than Thomas Nolan expected it to. Humphreys and Friedrich have the net. 
Again, they're going with the traditional two up. Not with Nolan and are. And that is the match. 6-3, six, 6-2 six, for Humphreys and Friedrich, and they are on to the semifinals. So we are going to keep the stream going for the Western New England National Ranking Platform Tennis Tournament here in Longmeadow, Mass. at the Field Club of Longmeadow. So we're going to be running the live stream. Uh, there will be uh, no sound, no commentating until our next match, which will be going off at about 2 p.m. We will see you then soon.
Eye on the ball, man. Eye on the ball. No, we didn't. 30 up.
Got it.
Hello, and welcome to the Field Club of Longmeadow, which is hosting the Western New England National Ranking Platform Tennis Tournament. My name is Matt Arciero, and I'm here with Jeff Morneau, my buddy. And uh, today we are bringing you semifinal action between the number one seeds, Johan Durant and Steve Mitchell. And their opponents are... Chris Humphreys and Gabriel Friedrich. And we are very excited to bring you this match. It's going to be a very good match. Jeff, what are you uh, what are you looking for with this with well, this match? I mean, right now they're doing the coin flip or the racket flip. Johan spins it up in the air. He's uh, Johan Durant in the forehand court playing with his uh, exclusive partner, uh, Stephen Mitchell. And on the other side, we've got the lefty. Chris Humphreys in the blue hat playing the forehand court with his new partner, Mr. Friedrich. Uh, welcome to the semifinals of a high-quality tournament. 
They have switched sides, and it looks like Durant is going to serve. Sun should not be a factor today, and we're about to put the ball in play. Yeah, and I would say for from a weather perspective, it's a you know just a great day for paddle, right? You know, it's um, you know while the, the skies are blue, um, no wind really, and um, the temperature is just about right. Yeah, it starts out. We got 15 love Durant. Little missed wide lob by Friedrich. Probably just getting a little bit of the nerves out to start the match. Now, Humphreys typically plays with uh, Felipe Osis Koenig. And Felipe Osis Koenig and his partner for this tournament, um, Dennis is the last name. Uh, they're in the other semifinals against um, Mark Powers and John Hughes. So we'll see if uh, Humphreys and, and his partner, Friedrich, can get through this uh, against a, a very tough team, of, you know, the number one team um, at this tournament. And, uh, you know, two-time national champions in 20 and 21 with, with Durant and Mitchell. So it's gonna, they have their work cut out for them, don't you think? Yeah, I think this is going to be a good match right here. Um, see how it goes. It looks, you know, it's a little interesting. They put Humphreys over here on the backhand side. Probably switch things up a little bit. Keep Friedrich over there on the forehand side. So that's a little change. See how things shake out here early, early on in the match here. Everybody just kind of feeling, feeling each other out. So that is a little bit interesting. I mean, other than Drew Broderick, there's not many lefties that will typically play in the ad side. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right for the most part. Um, you do see, you know, high quality players like a Humphreys, like a Mick or Doya that are able to do it. Drew Broderick obviously is highly capable of doing it. Other lefties are capable of doing it. But um, you don't usually see that in a lefty-righty combination. But here they're... You know, given that, um, you know, Humphreys really his backhand is is much better than his forehand, or at least he's much more willing to drive that backhand. Um, keeping that shot in the middle um, might be an advantage down the road. We'll, we'll see how it all plays out. And Johan Durant is going with the sidearm serve. Uh, you know, that's a, I would say, a trend that is, occurred maybe in the last five to seven years would you agree with that jeff yeah he's gone exclusively to that over the past couple of years i mean rarely you'll see it maybe once a match he'll throw one over his head and put it in there but right there we've got uh first game of the match goes to durant mitchell it looks like humphreys is going to serve to start for the team of humphreys and friedrich yeah i think the only exception to uh the the Sidearm serve, you know, Johan started to employ that a lot. But um, I recall back in uh, the 2021 national tournament, um, when it was raining out, they were, uh, Johan went to the overhand serve, you know, because of the ball skidding. Because we, you know, with paddle, you're playing in all, ter all types of weather. And so when it was slick like that, he was going with the traditional overhand serve. Right now we've got 15 all. Humphreys couldn't handle that. Yeah, yeah, tough one. 15-30, although, the, you know, the lefty serve is is an advantage, certainly serving to Durant. That's a very tough shot that Durant just hit right there. Came around, went backside, and was still able to get, you know, keep the ball nice and low. Not many people can do that. Uh, Durant right there, closing in. Normally very scary. He was clearly just trying to hit Friedrich right there. Friedrich turned to the side. Ball went by. We've got ourselves at 30 all. So, Jeff, I haven't really seen Friedrich play that much. I, you know, obviously, um, you know, Johan and Steve are, you know, national champions. Um, Chris has really come of, you know, come into himself as far as, being a nationally ranked player, he and Felipe Osas Koenig are number five in the nation. Um, so he's, I'm sure, used to this kind of scenario. But what about Friedrich? Do you think he's 
up to the task as far as being in the semis of a national ranking tournament? What yeah, do you I mean, know I, about him? I've, I've played him before. I played him last year with uh, John Hughes in a tournament. He's he's clearly got a lot of skills. It's nice to see him out here gaining some additional experience. I do think he's he's up to the task. I mean, he's uh, got a lot of skills. He's, you know, I'd say he's got, a, you know, certainly enough skills to do anything out here. It's a matter of, you know, experience is obviously a huge factor. He doesn't quite have the experience of the rest of the players on the court. So in crunch time, we'll see how it goes. But certainly for right now, he's, you know, at this point in the match, he's got, he, he knows what his role is. It's going to let Humphrey sit most of the balls up at the net. Um, he's just going to play his role. Right now, we've got 1-1 one, one after two games. So that's a so solid game by Humphreys, you know, off to getting that hold. I think that's really key for them to get into the match. Certainly will be a boost of confidence. You know, there's a shot like that. I'm sure he just doesn't see. Friedrich doesn't see shots like that all the time. Johan with some Durant with some great spin. Hits the board into the side screen. A lot of pace coming off of it. Friedrich wasn't able to handle it. And we've got 15 love Mitchell. That's a good reaction off of a neck cord. Steve Mitchell, very, very solid with his volleys. Um, and letting, at least at this point, now Johan's taking the switch so that he can get some overheads, put some pressure on, on uh, his opponents. Yeah, there you saw right there, a nice roller from Durant from the middle of the court. Got it off the back screen. Friedrich wasn't quite in position of that ball. Ball was down nice and low. Very difficult ball for Friedrich to handle. Um, point Durant. Wow, that was a great get off of a neck cord. A little bit of a scramble. And uh, Durant and Mitchell are back playing from the back court. Nice exchange right there. Durant not used to losing those, but is always willing to come forward and get themselves involved in exchange. Point, Humphreys, Friedrich. Good coverage there by Friedrich. So now I see what you mean by the backhand of Humphreys as far as he, you know, had that had that opportunity, but Johan was ready for it. Yeah, I think most people that have that are playing against Humphreys now know that, you know, if the ball is on his backhand side, you really shouldn't be worrying too much about the lob. He's really looking to drive that ball whenever he gets that backhand. You know, the tendency for, I think, the average player when they see a person on the other side with your, you know, that has a power shot or one great shot is to back up uh, and move away from the net. Uh, I think you're going to see the top players like a Mitchell or Durant, when they see that that ball is about to be drive, they actually go in the other direction. They go right towards the net. They get themselves right on top of the net, get their paddle right on top of the net, and they just want to try to get any type of racket on it that they can. And they got a little bit of a fortuitous bounce right there with uh, the little neck cord dribbler. You got to yeah. love those, but that's 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 the game of, of paddle. You yeah, take what you can I, get, I, right? I, I've, some people apologize for those, like a John Hughes. He's a lot nicer than many other people. I've never apologized for a let cord in my, in, in, in a, in my life, I don't think. And uh, so right now we've got, as a result of that let cord, we got 2-1 Mitchell Durant. Well, there's always the, the, the thought that those those even out, the neck cords. 
So what do you think? Maybe 50-50 for your lifetime? No, no. I clearly have had way more let cords than my opponents over time. I mean, I'll complain about them like anybody else, but I, I think over time, given the way that I particularly play, I, I have gotten way more let cords um, in my favor than, um, than against me. Oh, nice get by Friedrich there on the on the cut backhand. Yeah, came up from took, Johan. Took on took Durant on in a little challenge, got a little soft touch down there, nice and low, and Durant was gonna have to hit up. And um, I would have actually liked to see Durant make that one and see if Friedrich tried to tag him, but Durant popped it in the net, point Friedrich. Yeah, but then he just got back with a, a nice return, so So again, we have with Humphreys in the blue at net, Friedrich's uh, serving in the red red cap. Uh, got a lefty righty combination. So as we talked about, you know, the sun's going down. Um, what do you think? Do you think that's going to give them a little bit of an advantage, maybe? Yeah. With, this, with the sun here, I mean, you've played here. This is your, you know, you've you ran this tournament before. Um, I, I would have called it the Jeff Morneau Invitational. Uh, you know, back in the day. And, uh, but what about the sun at this time of day? I, I think, I don't think the sun's a factor right now. Sun's really for the most part gone down. I would say in the quarterfinals, it's been a factor before. Once you hit that 1130 to about 130 time, uh, it's always a problem, but now we're going on 230. Sun is not a problem at all. So um, other than lefty righties generally having an advantage, there's no particular advantage. What a great move there by Durant. Just got in there, used his hands, and is now taking the net. Oh, he missed that long, huh? Just unbelievable number of spinners in a row. I mean, those were three consecutive shots that easily could have been winners. Friedrich getting a little bit irritated here early. Mitchell is able to take advantage of that uh, that serve. He really doesn't mind the sidearm serve. We got a deuce point here. Let's see what happens. He goes overhand, puts it in play. Volley pops up. Clearly here they're going back. Advantage here now on this big point is clearly gone to Mitchell and Durant. And I really think if they're going to, if uh, Humphreys and Friedrich are going to win this game, Humphreys is going to just have to take a chance somewhere. Yeah, and, if, and uh, for you viewers, if you noticed, that was the second deuce. And this tournament's format is on the second deuce, the receiving team gets to, gets to uh, choose which side they want to receive from. So you notice that Steve Mitchell was taking a return for the second time in a row because they elected to have oh. Steve take that return. And they've now ended up that winning that, is winning a that point. Very difficult way to lose a no add point with a wide lob by Friedrich, but they just were putting so much pressure on him over there in the corner. Ends up just trying to hit the ball a lob down the line so that they'd have to hit the ball over to Humphreys, but he ends up hitting it wide and they lose that game. It's now, if I remember correctly, we have three one Durant Mitchell. And there we go, a nasty cutter, almost back into the net. Yeah, soft, uh, soft drives, soft drives down the middle of the Durant forehand is not a strategy. That doesn't work. <laughs> well, it's not a. It doesn't work ever. Never has. Never will. Just think this is an important game in this set for uh, Friedrich and Humphreys. Really will be an uphill battle in this set in particular if they go down 4-1. Durant Mitchell are just such strong front runners that if they get a little bit too far ahead here, I just it's going to be real hard for them to catch up. Yeah, and you notice there Humphreys trying to go for a big forehand. Again, your, to your point, his... Backhand is his better shot. He's probably pressing a little bit too much. Misses that forehand in the, in the net.
And there, there goes another one, uh, another Hello. forehand. He's feeling a little bit like he just wants to do a little bit too much, which is completely understandable because he knows that he's got to be the one to, he's got to be the one to make it happen if it's going to happen on that team right now. So, Jeff, I uh, let me ask you. Um, in the last match, we saw um, Anton Pratsenko playing uh, up um, and back formation with his partner Thomas Nolan. Thomas Nolan was hurt. Um, you could have considered. I think they were doing that because of the the injury to Thomas Nolan. But what do you what's the what do you think about the concept of an alpha and a beta team? And is that always appropriate for? paddle or do you think that it doesn't have to be that way yeah i mean i'm not sure i mean right now you're seeing scott humphreys kind of take control of this team he's talking to friedrich they're down for one this is just really great uh great experience by humphreys to slow things down a little bit talk to his partner get him on board i would like to see him slow it down just a little bit more than that to kind of freeze out a little bit um Durant, who clearly doesn't, and Mitchell, quite frankly, they don't like to play slow. So I, I just think taking a lot of time in between points is um, is always an effective play. It frustrates them a little bit. Um, but it was nice to see Humphreys, you know, take that time, not rush things, try to just make sure that he and his partner were on the same page for this game because they know, obviously, 4 ones a tough hill, uphill battle to climb. 5-1 is virtually impossible. So they want to make sure they get this one. And I always try to use that strategy as well, to stay on the court as long as I can, is take time in, in between points. Yeah, but you're not good. So there's a big <laughs> difference between you and Scott Humphreys. Let's just be let's just be clear about that. <laughs> when bad players do it, it's completely annoying. <laughs> Scott Humphreys is a good player. This is a good team. They're playing another good team. And so trying to get their act together is a good thing to do. When bad players are doing it, like you, it's just not good. Obviously, I'm <laughs> kidding. But it's, you know, you, exactly. there's, a, there's a, I wouldn't say there's a fine line, but there's a line, right? So you don't want to just be delaying for the purpose of, of delay exactly. on a regular basis. But taking taking a little break at 4-1 is fine. Yes, to, to strategize and to... And to uh reconfirm or change things up if they need to and into the paddle hut walks a local legend brad hoffman one of the all-time greatest club players we have ever seen he has played he has played in every event legendary serve big fella loves the net stays up there volleys doesn't move back very well but boy once that serve come, once that serves in and he gets to the net, he is difficult to deal with, and he is in the house. <laughs> so I think we've got ourselves still at the one four. Humphreys and Friedrich are in this game. Oh boy! Huge return there by Durant. Just takes that unbelievable serve by Humphreys, rips it into the corner, into the wire, bounces out, and now I think we have Unreturnable. an add point. For Mitchell and Durant. Oh, uh, that's a great lob by Mitchell. Play. Great play by Humphreys to attack right there. We got ourselves yep. another deuce game. Looks like Durant's gonna take it. See what see what we can get here from Humphreys out of a serve. I actually don't think it matters where you serve. Oh, oh good shot it. there by Humphreys. Doesn't matter where you serve to Durant. You serve down the middle to him. He moves left and rips a forehand. Serve wide to him. He runs out to the right, rips it as a forehand. But they got on. They're at 4-2. So Humphreys. their, their uh, little strategy talk did them well. Yeah. Right? Pumped up Friedrich a little bit. Great return right there. They win that point. Love 15. Two, four, serving two. Love 15. So we're not going to call it a delay tactic. We're going to call it a, a discussion on strategy and pumping up his partner, Friedrich. I think that was a good move. Good call. Oh, another great cutter. Yeah, super cutter into that side wire. Friedrich just not able to chase it down. I mean, quite frankly, even if that thing hits 
and pops out a little bit, it's going to be really difficult for Friedrich to get that one back in play. And I think, you know, also it's it's cold today. It's it's not as warm. I mean, the sun is out definitely, but it's cold. So I think that cutter is going to be working a little bit more as if it were if it were 10 degrees, you know, warmer. Would you think that cutter would be as effective, Jeff? I think anytime Durant's hitting a cutter, it's effective. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think the weather really impacts his skill level that much. I mean, but I mean, this would be interesting to see here. If I mean, Humphrey's obviously pressing a little bit more than he would with with his regular partner. But this is a you know, if they can pull this game out, get it back to four three. Get themselves into this set. Get themselves a little back into this set. Be great. I like how they're slowing things down. And Friedrich is up to the task as far as just getting those um, those lobs back or the you know the overheads back and just they just got an error. So that's a that's a good play. A little much there from Durant, getting a little frustrated. No need for him to really cut that one off and move over there and try to pick it off. I mean, Mitchell's an outstanding volleyer. Now he's got a fault, and we got a little opportunity here for Humphreys. See what he can do with this one. My guess is he's going to try to take advantage of it. I was wrong. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's just that's too bad. Yep. I mean, I would a... really like to see Humphreys on that big point being the, you know, being the, you know, I'm not going to call it an AB player, but being the player on that side. He had an opportunity there, an opportunity to, I think, win that game. And what did he do? You know, he kind of lobbed that forehand. I think he should have tried to run around it a little bit and rip that backhand in retrospect. He's probably regretting it. And now we've got 5 2 Mitchell Durant versus Humphreys and Friedrich. So um, I think we're going to go to the sponsors. We've got Goodroot as one of our sponsors here. Unbelievable. Without them, the tournament and the prize money and the food, the entertainment, the booze, absolutely, positively, unequivocally could not happen. And so we're going to give a really big shout out to Good Root. Good right Root. Now. Reshaping healthcare systems for good. Good Root. They are the main sponsor for the Western New England Platform Tennis Tournament of 2022. Yeah, I mean, they've been a sponsor here in Longmeadow for a long time now. They've really made this one of the premier events around in terms of prize money and quality of competition. Um, and so without them, really, things couldn't happen, not only not only here in Longmeadow, but also for all the things that they do um, for their customers and for the community. Really just a really big shout-out to Goodroot. Check them out, www.goodroot.com. And Mike Waterbury of Goodroot, he's also an avid – fan of, of platform tennis and he's playing and his game is getting better and better all the time. Uh, he's just been he's been spectacular to the to platform tennis in general and I've played with him, I've played against him and he's just a really great guy and uh, a, a paddle enthusiast and just love having him part of uh, part of this event and the paddle community was lucky to have him. Nice shot right there by Humphreys. Keeps it alive. Friedrich to serve. They've gone to the Aussie formation, which I, I actually like against Durant myself normally. Um, 
I think it's a good play. I think his best return to serve is one that goes cross court. So if you can cut that off, if you can handle the power and the pace, and you can hang in there, I think it's uh, it's really helpful. It keeps you at the net, prevents him from doing what he likes to do, which is just take the net. Johan's really trying to roam around now, huh, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, he's feeling it at 5-2. He wants to put this set away. And, I mean, he's now hitting one-handed rolling roller backhands. He clearly looks, you know, he's normally confident, but he's looking overconfident right now. Uh, nice cover. Very good cover by Durant there on the nick. Would you also say, Jeff, with the... Uh, what a shot there by Mitchell. With this level of play, and they, they kept Great the point going by Humphreys. by Humphreys, absolutely. But as far as the communication between partners, as far as uh, you know, covering on the nick. Oh wow! Just a, just drops it right in there. I mean, Durant. I mean, he had three quarters of the court. I played with Durant before, and you know, it looked like Mitchell was basically on the side screen right there, and he just dinked it right in. And we got a six-two set. We're going to take a quick break and let the gentleman get some water. A little refresh here. My guess is uh, at some point here, Humphreys is going to take a little break. He's going to talk to his partner, see if they can come up with a new strategy for the second set. And uh, we'll take a little break. We are back on air, and you're seeing that they, they are having that meeting. They are having that discussion. They are trying to figure things out. We're going to have a new ball put in play right here. Uh, hopefully, you know, it was a competitive set, I would say, but very fast. I'd like to see, you know, if Humphreys and Friedrich are, I'd like to see them really slow things down a little bit and see if they can frustrate in some way the team of Mitchell and Durant. They haven't been able to do it yet, but um, I'd like to see a little slower play out of uh, Friedrich and Humphreys just to try to make this match last a little bit longer for all of us, but including them because I think the longer it goes, the, the, the better their likelihood of success. Yeah, and I felt like Friedrich on a couple just lobs, he missed some, some lobs, which – you know, the golden rule in paddle is you want to just, even if it's a short lob, you know, you want to keep it in the court as much as you can. He did miss a couple, and then he did go for a couple forehands that I thought he shouldn't have. Probably re let those to, to Humphreys to, to, when they have the shot to take it. Yeah, a couple of those, you know, those, those whatever you call them, the no-ad games or the three-all games or whatever it is, and... uh you know, if those go the other way, those one or two points, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a closer set. I'm not saying that the uh, result would have been different, but the, 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 the things could have been any day. You, know, you win, or, win or lose those three all games, it can make a difference in a set in terms of whether it's a blowout or close or whether you win it. Durant serving there, a little let cord long.
Uh, the nice drop volley again for for Durant, stepping across. He's got such range, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, his wingspan is just unbelievable, and his eye-hand coordination, his ability to, you know, he, he can do just about anything up there. See that spin coming off the back screen? Thinking it was going to go to Friedrich, but Humphreys knew better and took that off the back screen. Good swing there by Humphreys. He had Durant a little bit off the net, hit the top of the tape. That one kind of goes over. It's going to have to be a half volley from Durant, and then it's going to pop up, but didn't happen. Missed serve there. So he went with the traditional there, overhand serve. Oh, good. And good that enough. lob sneaks in. Yeah. And now I think we have an add point here for Humphreys. I'd like to see him hit that forehand. Doesn't hit it. He lobs it up. You know, the return of serve is really, you know, you know Durant is just kind of hitting that underhand one in there. You really want to try to take advantage of that flicker and try to rip it. And here we are again at, uh, at three all or that mini deuce or the game point, whatever you want to call it. But that was one there where it was, you know, an opportunity, I think, for Humphreys to really take, try to take advantage of that with a backhand, big backhand return. Now you got. I think he's probably trying to intentionally play the point longer, maybe not speed it up. Is that why he's lobbing off of the? Well, it's hard to it's hard to rip that ball and Durant, you know. Mitchell volleys so well. He's one of the best volleyers in the country, and Durant usually doesn't miss, you know, rarely misses a first first volley, but you're up 3-2. I mean, I think at least you got to give it a rip, you know? you got to give it a rip. You're not, you're not going to get so many chances in paddle, especially against, you know, the number one team in the country. Oh, That's a great, re great there, reaction right? volley by Mitchell. Yeah, and I like that. A good, you know, you're getting the ball on Humphrey's backhand. He's going to take a shot at it. I think that's what he's got to do. Yep. The best, you know, it's the best shot on the court on their side. So when you get that opportunity, you got to take it. That was wide there. Very dangerous play by Durant. Not one that I think is textbook. Obviously, he can do anything, but that's not the shot. From that particular point in the court, he hits it wide. Humphreys and Friedrich take a 1-0 lead in the second set. So, so Jeff, just to point out, Nick Irdoha and Sven Burris are, at this point, the number one team in the country. Now, Johan and, and Steve Mitchell, they lost in the semifinals last year of the um, national tournament. Mark Powers and John Hughes, who are on the other side of the draw, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts as far as them, you know, getting back there to, to the top spot and they've been playing a good amount of tournaments where, whereas John Hughes and Mark Powers, I think this is their first tournament back this season, but, um, not to look forward to the finals, you know, we don't know how they're doing on the other um, side of this draw, but as far as Johan and Steve, what are your thoughts as far as, I mean, they're just, they're, they're dangerous at any time, anywhere, whether they're, you know, whether their ranking is number one, number two, number three, number four, number 10, doesn't matter really what their ranking is at this point. Um, they are always going to be a formidable team and a team that is, I think, in all likelihood going to be considered by the majority of people to be the favorites. If there was a betting line and draft Kings were out and it was Durant Mitchell versus whoever, uh, the betting line is almost, they're almost always going to be favorites. And here in Longmeadow, Durant has had an unprecedented level of success. This is where it all started for him, quite frankly, here in Longmeadow. This is where it started for him. His rise to the top started from here. And the fans appreciate having continued to see him here year after year after year for, you know, the last 15 to 20 years. So, um, you know. You played this tournament with him, and you won it here. 
right? I, I, I have back in the back in the day. I think in the dinosaur age is somewhere around that time. <laughs> but the um, you know this match is still this match is still in question. I think that you know Friedrich and Humphreys have you know they have. It looks like they have actually slowed things down a little bit. Um, and they're they're getting nice. pumped up there. Humphreys with a little pump up. Friedrich with a nice volley. They've yeah. started out this set well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's unreturnable. It's the second yeah. time we've seen that. You just can't serve out there to that forehand wide. I don't think it's a good idea. Got that lefty serve. I'd much prefer to see go into the body to Duran. I think you got to make him move left. You don't want him moving right, hitting that shot. He loves it out there. Keep him down the middle. Maybe, you know, I don't know if Humphreys has it, but if he does, maybe even mix in some of those, you know, sidearm serves to Durant. So speaking of that, Jeff, what do you think about the, the whole, you know, trend of the sidearm versus the traditional? And I've noticed like Sven Burris, you know, going with a high heat down the middle with his serve. A traditional tennis serve, but what's your view on that? I mean, Johan has brought the sidearm. I think because he's adopted it, I think a lot of other players have felt like if he's doing it, I should be doing it. So, what's your what's your view on that? Yeah, pl I mean, plenty of other people were doing it before him. I mean, there was, you know, I, I, I go down a list of people that were before him that brought it to the game. Um, but it's, you know, it's made a difference. It's made a difference for sure. Um, What's the difference? Well, as far know, as the ball stays low, it's tougher to return. Some players don't like it. Um, some players don't mind it. I haven't seen, you know, there aren't many players that would say, oh, I return it better than, an, you know, better than an overhand serve. They either return it about the same or worse. So, um, you know, it's been an effective, an effective move, whether you agree with it or not, it's, uh, it's effective. So. Yeah. I don't know if I've, if I've seen a lot of lefties employ the sidearm. It's typically more righties for, for whatever reason. I don't know if the lefties feel like they have just more of an advantage um, with their own traditional serve. But uh, it definitely keeps the ball low. And Humphreys, as, as, we, as we've seen, he has not taken a big cut at these sidearm serves. Yeah, he just hasn't. I'm, I'm a little surprised that once in a while we're not seeing that out of him. But... You know, shout out here to, you know, Johan Durant, and his, who's the pro at the Country Club in Boston. Been there a number of years. Members love him. He's been doing a spectacular job there um, with his – he's got a great staff, good team, great instructor, obviously a great player, but also great person, great instructor. Um, he's got a lot of support from his club and from the members for playing these events, winning these events. And, you know, you can't – if you don't have that support as a pro – um, you know, it's just not the same. And yeah, and then, got, and then Stephen Mitchell, at the the director of rackets at Brayburn Country Club in Newton, and yeah. along with um with Johan is one. You know, he's a two time APTA national champion. Johan has won it five times, but uh, I've played a, a good amount of paddle at Brayburn. That's great, uh, great uh, club. Um, my good friend, family friend, Kenny Swan, is a member at Brayburn, so I want to shout out to him. Yeah, Brayburn, spectacular club, great golf course. I think it's hosted some uh, great events, including some, you know, some national level events there. If I, I don't know the course myself, but I have to be honest, I have played it a number of times with some members there, and it's just, um, you know, it's one of the it's one of the best courses, certainly in New England, if not if not in the country. Um, Great club, great people, great place to be, and um, same. You know, Steve Mitchell is lucky to have the support of, of the members of that club as well for being able to do what he does um, and continue to improve his game and continue to play at a very, very high national level in their efforts to become a national champion just one more year. Things are a little turn of events here. I mean, they're really starting to feel a little bit. Friedrich even right there, a little return and go. We got themselves Mitchell and Durant down. Love three here in the second set. Fist pumping by Humphreys and Friedrich. They are feeling energized. Um, really hope that they don't speed up the play here because I think that that will turn things down for them. But Friedrich taking his time, 
very smart on the sidelines. Mitchell and Durant ready to go. They just want to hurry up and get back into this set. That was a very good play by uh, Friedrich. We're off the return. He, he snuck in, and uh, he caught Johan um, at the net. So he has definitely stepped it up early on in the second set. So it's good to see. Friedrich tried to. It's 1-2. One, okay. 1-2 one, in the second. Guess I got the score on there. I must have missed something. Hey, Phil. Phil Cameron, Hartford Golf Club. Good to see you. I'm going to take a little break here for a couple minutes, and so you're on your own for a little bit here, Matt. Okay. I think I got it covered. So the lefty, Chris Humphreys, in the blue, he is working it, and they've relinquished the net, and that is just an unbelievable overhead with such spin and speed from Johan Durant to break Friedrich. It is now 2-2 in the second set, and Durant and Mitchell won the first set. So as we talked about, Chris Humphreys had not been driving his return, but he did go for a drive off of that sidearm serve from Johan Durant. And we have a 15-all in this game. 2-2 in the second set. Uh, sneaky backhand by Chris Humphreys. They reclaim the net, but he misses that that overhead. He made a very good play by going behind Durant and Mitchell at the net. Uh, just missed the overhead. I don't know if the sun was a factor on that as a lefty looking into the west western sky. Might have been a factor for Humphreys missing that, that, that overhead. Good get by Friedrich. Humphreys calls for that. Humphreys typically plays the deuce side with his partner Osis Koenig, but for uh, for this tournament, he's been receiving from the ad side. They are switched at the moment, and we'll see how this point plays out. And I think uh, Durant missed that, so we have a deuce score for the game. A ball from the other court coming in. Johan's returning it back. And here we are, Deuce. And Chris Humphreys airmails that forehand. Again, as Jeff was pointing out, Chris's uh, probably better side is the backhand. 
he took a cut at that forehand and uh, missed it badly. But you look at that backhand, that's a very good return there. I am back. Happy to be back doing a little announcing. Took a little break, Matt. I was watching my son. I'm trying to pick it up on YouTube. My son, Ryan Morneau, is in the NCAA semifinals of the Pickleball National Championships. He's on YouTube right now, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of double dipping, doing this announcing, and trying to keep my eye on that at the same time, which is great. That is totally understandable, Jeff. Yep. That is very exciting to have your son playing that. Congrats to him. Yeah, it's just awesome. It's really, it, it's really great. Yeah. Chris Humphreys to serve in the second set. He and his partner, Gabriel Friedrich, in the red are in the forecourt. And in the upper right is Stephen Mitchell. And Johan Durant on the upper left. They are two-time national champions together in 2021 and 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. This is the semifinals of the Western New England Platform Tennis Tournament. It's a national ranking tournament. And Steve Mitchell misses that wildly. And as we've been talking about, Chris Humphreys delivering his serve with a standard tennis serve. You only get one serve in platform tennis. He misses that. So point goes to Durant and Mitchell. Steve Mitchell has a very good return, as you just saw there. Very good forehand return. Very solid at the net. He gives his partner, Johan Durant, on the left-hand side, upper left, a lot of freedom up at the net. And Steve Mitchell does his thing and hits Friedrich. When they are both up at the net, Durant and Mitchell, they are tough to get the ball by. You really have to be very patient with your lobs. And uh, make them into it, you know, have them make an error if that's if that's at all possible. It's it's a slightly cold day. It's in the 40s, so the ball's not coming off the wires as maybe um, as high as it would if it were a warmer day. That one right there came off just enough for Mitchell to give a <laughs> give a big rip to though. So your timing wasn't very good. We've seen Durant miss two forehand returns here. I'm not expecting a third, but I got it. As I don't expect it, he gets a third. We've got, I think we've got to have an ad here. Ad going to Humphreys. Opportunity for them to really win this game right here. Big spin off the back screen. Yeah, forced, tremendous serve. Yeah, really forced Mitchell into the lob. Yeah, oh, boy. That's, yeah, that, that's, okay. not, that's not good. No. But he survived it. Yeah. Because he only survived it because Durant hit it 180 miles an hour as opposed to 120. So it came so far off the back screen, it almost jumped back over the net again. I like how Friedrich is hitting that overhead and then closing the net again. So... He has uh, definitely playing a very good brand of, of paddle. Um, again, as far as probably being the, the least experienced of this group. Oh, what a shot there by Humphreys. A lot of low balls. They hit like three or four in a row, low into the corner. Finally got the super short one, and Humphreys made no mistake about it. He put the spin on it, and that thing just went right back into the net. Point over, and I think we've got four, two? Three all. Three all. Three all. Three all what happens when I kind of win I away believe it's three all. I could be wrong, but that doesn't happen much, Jeff. You know that. No, I'm watching on the sidelines. My son is down two games to love in the semifinals of the pickleball. They're going to have to do the same thing. Hopefully he and his partner can pull it together and pull out the pickleball semifinals and make it to the finals. We'll see. 
But while we're at it, I'd like to give a little shout out again. I did a little bit in the quarterfinals to Short Hills Club. Everybody from Short Hills, give yourself a big round of applause right now. We'll take a take a second or two. But in particular, uh, last match I gave a shout out to legends Mike Stulak and Kerry Delmonico, who everybody in the paddle community and certainly at Short Hills knows. But this time around, a little less famous people to give a shout out to at Short Hills. I am going to shout out to some up and coming B level players, Christina Bowen and Diane Brown. I have heard stories here in Longmeadow about how they are up and comers uh, from the B team. And so just want to say, keep up the great work. You are going to get there. Uh, that's tough. We are all sure about it. Great shot there. Stuck it down right in the corner. Hit the snowboard almost, which those shots are always difficult to, difficult to get back. And Steven Mitchell, I've been calling him Steve, but he likes to go by Steven. Just missed that that serve. He, he also hits a sidearm serve. And Steven's been very gracious. He even was showing me one time after a, a league match in Boston how to hit the sidearm serve. So just a great dude for, uh, you know, the quality of player that he is. He spent some time with me, as bad as I am, Jeff, to show me how to do the sidearm serve and some of the tricks that he employs. Yeah, I mean, So I thought that was great of him to do that. It is nice of him, but I would have told him it's a waste of his time to try to teach somebody like you. But... Um, <laughs> Could have used this. He's just gonna <laughs> donate time. There's probably other people that. Um, oh boy. I'm just gonna say right there that Friedrich is lucky that Durant just didn't tag either him or Humphreys on that one there. Johan has not used the the real bomb today as far as uh, really heavy off the back screen. Um, I haven't seen that employed yet, but maybe that's because he's not as frustrated. The pace of play has been pretty pretty fast so he's johan i feel is getting what he wants in these points without having to play really long drawn out points or have to resort to the the heavy off the back screen shot despite it being 3-3 in the second set and right there friedrich um just couldn't handle the side screen to the back screen spin and uh, comes up short with putting that over the net. So yeah, Johan got what he wanted. And um, that's Friedrich. Something, yeah, something like that. That's nothing on Friedrich. Yeah, a tough time handling that one. Are we still at three all here? We're still at three all, yes. Maybe that's why um, Stephen Mitchell didn't show me anymore because I kept calling him Steve and he wasn't gonna, you know, keep showing me. What do you think? Or was it just that I couldn't pick up the sidearm hey, serve? I'd say he gave up on you. <laughs> yeah, there oh, it is. It's see. just if you're not used to playing against that ball, it's just so difficult. Um, you know, it just comes with experience, knowing that that's a shot that Durant hits. You've got to be moving and ready for that coming your way in advance of it. Otherwise, it's just too late. You can't be chasing that ball down the side wire. You've got to move prior to Durant hitting that thing. You've got to be moving in that direction. Otherwise, it's kind of going around you, and you're chasing it down. you got to try to find it with your eyes. It's really difficult. And you said it was going along the side wire, but I, I would argue that I'm not even sure if it went up the board. It was that, it was that low. Tremendous shot. Well, I will say on the bright side, it looks like my son, Ryan Morno did lose in the semifinals of the men's pickleball nationals. However, I am also learning that he is in the semifinals of the mixed doubles of the pickleball nationals, and he is back on YouTube. So this is a double semifinals for my son, Ryan Morno, also playing on YouTube. So uh, I'll be watching that as well.
That is good stuff, Jeff. Oh, and he just smoked one down the line on YouTube. All right, I got to come back to the paddle mat. Oh, great shot there by Humphreys after that great overhead slam by Durant from the backcourt. Oh, that's that's just a wonderful, very spinny, pop spin overhead by Durant. Humphreys really had no chance. Very difficult to... Uh, to play that off the back screen, and then Johan Durant pegs Chris Humphreys. So two very quick points just demonstrated the talent of, of Johan Durant, but a good serve by Friedrich. Friedrich serving at 3-4 down in the second set. He and Humphreys lost the first set. Yeah, that's big trouble. And that's that's lights that's out. Just big trouble. Yeah. If the if the over, if the lob is too short, it just gives uh, the quality of player that Durant is, and and, and even Mitchell that they are going to uh, hit an overhead that is probably pretty close to unreturnable. And now Durant is serving at five three in the second set. To Friedrich and Humphreys for a chance to get into the finals. And I probably should say again. Yeah, I actually can't. I mean, it's been 20. I'm mean, honestly, it's been 20 years, and I can't remember. Um, I can't remember Durant not being in the finals of the Long Meadow tournament. It seems inevitable that no matter what, he's going to be in the final. Well, I would say, I think with Stephen Mitchell, when Stephen was first starting to play the game, I know that they had maybe a couple tough years as far as just advancing in tournaments because Stephen was still learning, but He's obviously <laughs> got to the highest level, so uh, they are now just a, such a formidable team. But I know that there were a couple of years, right, Jeff? That you know they yeah maybe, was, maybe one. one. It didn't it didn't last very. It didn't, <laughs> I can tell you this: it, it did not it it did not last it did not last very long. It maybe was one year. I mean, Stephen Mitchell's obviously a great rackets player. Yes, he's a great tennis player. Great rackets and tennis coach and director and the whole bit I and mean, he's got south african he's got great volleys and so it was just a matter of him you know learning a little bit of the strategy and yes they've been great ever since yeah i mean his he he uh there was one final national championship where i don't think he missed the volley so he obviously once he got the strategy down um he definitely steven makes the uh makes the game look very easy So we just heard some applause from Hughes and Powers, and we believe that they have maybe advanced to the finals. He net. almost had it, but it just just landed right before the sideline. That's that's a that's an official shot or a legit shot, yeah. a legal shot to go around the net post. But I think the ball landed to to uh, it was out. It landed outside the line, but it was a great attempt. Great effort, got there. Just it's the old got there, just didn't get it in. That looks like it's going to go, and it is long. Oh, 
Oh, it's a little um, an error from Durant, and now I think we're going to. I don't know if this is the the, the second deuce. No ad point. Could get by Friedrich. Yeah, he got to that one. He's obviously had a share of troubles with that shot throughout the match. Got to that one. Got it back in play. I mean, I'm guessing we're going to see it again if we get another, if there's another short lob to Duran. I think we're going to see that exact same shot again and see if Friedrich can handle it. You can tell as, as this match has gotten closer to its potential end, Friedrich and Humphreys have slowed the points down. They're trying to get those lobs deeper. Johan has made a couple mistakes, but, you know, with a serve and a, a missed overhead. But, again, they've been used to many of these points and playing the, the waiting game, if you will. But here we go, just like you said. There it is. That's the one. The short one comes out of that corner. That's the one that Durant has kind of been taking advantage of Friedrich over there. Just not used to seeing that that type of ball come off of a paddle with that type of pace and that amount of spin into those wires. Oh, great return there. Snuck it down the line. They take the net. Gabriel Friedrich is a head pro at Weeburn. Country Club in Darien, Connecticut. And as you mentioned, Chris Humphreys is at Short Hills. Very nice point. Oh, so they break them. They broke them, Jeff. So now it's four serving five. So Humphreys and Friedrich have stayed in with that break right there. So Chris Humphreys and Gabriel Friedrich are down four five in the second set after losing the first set to Johan Durant and Stephen Mitchell. Yeah, and in the other semifinals, we've got uh, the first set actually just ended. Um, very long points over there. I've been watching just a little bit of it as we go. And um, very long, very long points, but huge powers pull out the first set. And so um, we'll see how that one ends up. But clearly that match is the points are a, a, a lot longer over there than they are over here in the one that we're watching. Uh, so Johan did a little sneak attack there. He almost pulled it off. But Humphreys and Friedrich were up to the task as far as uh, volleying into the open court. And they hit a great overhead right there. Get better, Thomas Nolan. We'll see you. Oh, great overhead there by Humphreys and a really good pickup by Durant. Really low into the screen. Another one. I mean, they are just digging balls. What wow. a three in a row Holy by mackerel. Humphreys. Just dominated that point with that lefty overhead. Three Very impressive. Great overheads in a row. Spectacular. Very impressive right there with the spins that he had low on the boards. And then he finished it off with a, a cutter back into the net. Not sure what that if that was a out serve 
if that was called out or the return. Yeah, Friedrich right up there. He had it. Great shot there. Can he finish? Oh, what a get almost by Humphreys. Really, that all happened because Friedrich took Humphreys' ball at the net. He had that lefty overhead that has been dominating play, and Friedrich just reached back and took one. Probably should have let that one go earlier in the point. Uh, double fault by or fault by Humphreys. Again, you only getting one serve in the game of platform tennis. Very costly. Oh, another great return by Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell had that stab volley and that, that point prior I thought was just a great reaction. They're going to do the switch from the backcourt and have Humphreys play on the ad. Johan's hitting that cutter overhead again to Friedrich. If he can't hit it, or hit a good lob off of it, he'll just keep doing it. If he gets a chance to keep testing Friedrich. That's a good tester forehand by Friedrich. Yeah, you can see, right? I mean, this point is just a really long point right here. I'm trying to grind it out. You just see the variety that Johan is uh, employing with his with his overheads, working both sides, side screen, back screens, top spin, roller overheads, cutters. He's got it all. Trying to get his his opponents out of position to open the court up. And you'll see Stephen Mitchell move over to allow for Johan to hit that, that overhead. Get there. Get and here we go. Johan's shot clock maybe ended right there. And so Friedrich and Humphreys have the net, but Mitchell with a oh, great... Oh, what a great get by Humphreys. Oh. What an amazing shot. Run that thing down and hit a low one-handed backhand with his back to the court. And the volley gets missed, and they remain alive in this tournament. Great shot by Chris Humphreys. Chris is really moving well. You can see how he's Resetting after each hit shot. And they just elicited a, an error by Johan. I think this might be add point for uh, Humphreys Friedrich to tie it to five all. Wow. 
beautiful cutter overhead by Chris Humphreys. He's hit some of those in the last couple of games that have really given trouble to Stephen Mitchell and Johan Durant. And looks like Johan has his hands on his hips a little bit. He might be a little bit frustrated, maybe thinking they let one get away, didn't finish the match as maybe quickly as they maybe thought. I mean, and Friedrich has really kind of stepped up recently. And, and Humphreys has been playing great. Big comeback in that game right there. I mean, two faults, I think, by Humphreys in that deciding game. Serving down four or five with two faults, one would not expect it, would not have expected Humphreys and Friedrich to pull that game out. Usually Durant Mitchell, absolute closers, weren't able to close it out right there. We'll see how this set develops. Or maybe we have the wrong score. All right, so we're going for a ball change. It is five all in the second set. Steven Mitchell and Johan Durant won the first set. And we are now in the second set. And uh, it is tied five games all, but they wanted to change the ball. I suspect after all those cutter overheads that both teams were hitting, um, the, the ball probably had no more flocking on it. It's a, it's a rubber ball with kind of a felt-like surface. And uh, the flocking was probably trimmed off of it after all those cut shots that all the players were hitting. So they're now just warming up the new ball. Everyone getting used to it, and they'll resume play in a second. Back in action here, five all. Fans are all outside because the weather is still spectacular. I'm going to say right now there's probably about 150 people here watching the two semifinals matches. Just really getting warmed up here in Longmeadow. Great shot there by Friedrich. Pulled it down the line. Good volley by Mitchell. Points here in this court on the show court have definitely gotten longer as this match in the second set has developed. A lot more intense. That big comeback win in that last game by Humphreys and Friedrich has inspired the crowd and them. Definitely the, the pace of play, don't you think? With, uh, with Humphreys and Friedrich, they're taking their chances. Uh, maybe that was a little bit ill-advised as far as... I don't know. I like that shot right there by Humphreys. I mean, that's his ball. He makes that, I'm going to think, nine times out of ten. He could have got that one down low at Mitchell. Not saying Mitchell would have missed it, but I think a good opportunity there for a drive. I don't think Humphreys is regretting the opportunity. Probably just the execution. There we go. Is that your forehand or backhand? That just... That... I don't know what that was, but I think we've got – what do we have here in this game? Do you know what the score? Uh, I, I think know it's either 35 or 40 I, love. Yeah, it's, it's one of those because Chris Humphreys has missed two backhands. I would have thought maybe, but he wanted to give it a rip, and that one's long. And so it must be 40, 40 45 right here. Yes. And now 40, 30. Mitchell. Really like to see Humphreys take a rip at this one. It's going to be the best look that he gets, but he 
constantly goes to that lob. I'm going to have to ask him, win or lose this match, I'm going to have to ask him why he goes to the lob off the return with such a great backhand that he has. Great scramble by Friedrich. He's going to have to scramble again. <laughs> yes, he is. Routine ball there by Humphreys. He's holding his head down low. Knows he shouldn't have missed that one. I don't know what happened there in the corner. Couldn't have been the sun. It's in the other spot. Maybe it hit the nick. Hard to tell from here, but certainly not one that uh, Humphreys is excited about missing. Grabs the water. Durant Mitchell up 6-5. They are, like, raring to go right now. Probably still fuming from the loss of the game in which they were, which they were up 5-4. Friedrich to serve, down 4-5. Taking a quick, practice serve with the new ball. Serve and back. I'm not sure. Was Friedrich wearing these shoes the entire match? Because those are as neon green or neon yellow or whatever the color is as the ball. And I don't remember seeing that earlier on. It's almost like he switched shoes. <laughs> now that you point that out, I just, I just saw the red... And a forehand volley error. The red shirt, Friedrich. the red hat. Not sure I would have gone where I went with that volley. That I mean, the overhead that Humphreys hit. Great return there by Mitchell. Oh, lobs it long. Yeah. Again. Yeah, we're now at love we're now at love 30. I mean, this is like the hope and the pray area right here. You're really hoping and praying that Durant misses a return. Yeah. And it didn't happen. No, he got it in. Humphreys called it in. It was probably in. Hard for me to see from here. It's now love 40. We have quadruple match point. And that, my friends, is the end of the match for Humphreys and Friedrich. Great run for them. Really well played. A lot of heart there to come back in that second set. Really put on a good fight. Down 5-4. Even brought it back. Made it exciting for the fans. Durant and Mitchell just a little bit too much there at the end when it really when it really mattered. Um, looking forward to a great final. Nice commentating with you, Matt. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see if the other semi-split sets, I'm sure that we will be moving them over to the live stream. But in the meantime, Matt, signing off. Thank you, Jeff.
So you are watching a backdraw match at the Western New England Platform Tennis National Ranking Tournament. The uh, finals match is scheduled to go on at 4.30 approximately. And we're going to keep the live stream on. And we might have some audio with this match. However, it will be mostly silent, and we will be coming back with commentating at approximately 4.30.
We're doing a raffle, 425, and final starts around 430. Room full of people looking forward to the raffle for the Masters Paddle and the Palm Ball set, www.palmball.com. Great new sport. Check it out. Back soon.
Hello and welcome to the Field Club of Longmeadow, which is hosting the Western New England National Ranking Tournament for Platform Tennis. My name is Matt Arciero and I'm here with Jeff Morneau. And this evening we are bringing you the finals tournament between Johan Durant and Stephen Mitchell and John Hughes and Mark Powers. And this is going to be a great matchup of the number one and two seeds of the tournament. Uh, the draw went according to form. And so here we are. And uh, Jeff, what are your thoughts on the on the match? Well, we're seeing the players right now finishing their warm-ups with their serves. Both teams had a fairly easy route to the final. Some good semi-final matches, but they went sort of as expected. Uh, Humphreys. And his partner, Friedrich, in the semifinals lost uh, to Durant and Mitchell. And then we had Hughes and Powers take out Onassis Koenig and his partner. We have the matchup that everybody has been waiting for. We've got the number one and two seeds. We've got USA versus South Africa. We have the pride of Massachusetts on the line here tonight. John Hughes from the western part of the state. Johan Durant from the eastern part of the state. We have 150 to 250 fans here. And the match is about to get started. Very excited to watch this match. What do you think, Matt? That is awesome. I thought you were going to also just say, uh, let's get ready to rumble with that introduction. Um, what I think is interesting, Jeff, is that the last, two, the last time these two teams met, was in the semifinals of the national tournament. And Hughes and Powers won that match in three sets. It was a warm day. Tonight is a lot colder. And I thought that, uh, you know, there was, they kind of outlasted them, Hughes and Powers, but we're going to see how, what happens tonight. Yeah, we've got a big raffle going on right now. Master Athletics, always very, very supportive of the Longmeadow tournament. Really appreciate their support year after year after year. 
with balls, with rackets, with paddles. They are again donating another paddle. They're holding a big raffle right now before the match starts. Looks like Durant is going to serve in the middle of the raffle. The match is started. And as that first point is being kicked off, I do want to say that our main sponsor for the tournament is Good Root, reshaping healthcare systems for good. And we are uh, very, you know, with gratitude, have them as a sponsor. They've been fantastic supporters of this event and platform tennis in general. Good Root, reshaping healthcare systems for good. Great stuff. First point went to Durant and uh, Mitchell. They are up. 15 love. Little miss there on a roller from about the middle of the court by Durant, shaking up a little bit over there. It is certainly cooled off here in Long Meadow. We got 15 all right now. I do want to know if my number was called for the for the free racket in the raffle, Jeff. Well, one of the disadvantages of being an announcer is you do not get to participate in any of those things. <laughs> it looked like numerous numbers were called before they eventually found a winner. So in all likelihood, Matt, it was you. <laughs> you will have to purchase your master racket. A good right. value, great product, many players playing with it. Durant with a fault there, and we are at 30 all. So Johan Durant going with that sidearm serve do you, was, did that ball catch do you think uh tough to see from here but it looked out to me judging by the reactions i think we have an add point for durant and now we are at deuce okay you were right good return there nice lot of spin by mark powers on that return ball came off the paddle of durant just a little bit deep you so, know Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, on the Jeff. return of serve, you know, you're going to see the traditional. John Hughes doesn't, you know, he doesn't have a great return of serve. It's okay. Usually puts the ball in play, tries to spot it, but he doesn't really have enough power or pace on his return of serve to really make an impact on the volley of Durant and Mitchell. Unlike Parsons, he's able to put a lot of spin and power on it and make an impact. So you'll see. Most of the time, Hughes is really just hitting what I would call a probing. Um, great shot there. Snuck it through. A probing sort of drive on the return. First volley is usually going to come back and play. Mark Powers, on the other hand, really going to try to take advantage. And if he can take a smack at it, he's going to do it. So, Jeff, in this final, is there regular scoring? Or are we going with the with the no, the no ad? Do you know if... Miss lob there long, just not good. Yeah, we do have we do have regular scoring here for the final. That's the traditional way that uh, tournaments have been played. It was no ad scoring up until now. You know, the no ad scoring, as I've seen throughout the year, typically not making a difference in the overall result of what you would anticipate the match uh, outcome to be. Uh, but this one's going the distance. Uh, all all games are going to be played to conclusion. Uh, so if it's, you know, no ads, one ad, whatever it is, you're going to have to win the game outright. No uh, winner take all points. And as expected, you know, we're seeing sort of right from the beginning a very, you know, we've got a deuce game right from the start. So hopefully this is the match I anticipate it will be the match that everybody expected. Interesting. You know, um, the players, you can tell it's a little bit cooler out, you know, John Hughes playing with a sweatshirt. Um, typically it's, you know, again, it was sunny all day today, but it's definitely cooled off. Mark powers in the blue on the left hand side side of the you know lower part of the screen john hughes the lefty so we have another lefty righty combination going against two righties in steven mitchell and johan durant and well, mark missed powers there by, yeah missed, missed there by mark powers but he's it was really that's one that's right in his wheelhouse expect him to make that one it's the right shot to go for and he just happened to miss it so uh first game hold of serve by johan durant 
Lots of fans outside. The patio heaters going. Lots of hats and jackets. Hoodies. It's just great to see again this year at Longmeadow. People coming out to support the event. Yeah, short lob there by John Hughes. Durant goes right at Mark Powers. Powers couldn't get out of the way, tried to block it off the deck, ends up just not making it back over. Big smack there by Mitchell off the top of the net. We have 15 all. Great return by Johan, catching John Hughes at the net. Just a tough ball to, to volley. Johan really powered it, Adam. And that lob is long. Yeah, third lob we've seen miss between these two teams so far. Something you don't usually see. Good volley there by... Mark Powers, not many people. There aren't many people that are serving and volleying against Durant these days. Strategy seems to be either play Australian or stay back, but Mark Powers still coming in and making that volley. So, um, Jeff, who do you give the advantage to? You know, this has been... They've had a full day of playing. Um, this is their fourth match of today. Do you give anyone an advantage as far as just the length of, uh, of the day as far as fitness goes? Or do you feel like, hey, it's the final and it does, it's kind of a wash? Yeah, kind of a wash. I think all both teams have had a pretty easy route today. A lot good good spacing between the matches. Um you know, if anything, and it comes to that, I'd probably give a little slight edge to the Durant-Mitchell team only because they've played more as a team this season, and this is the first time out for the team of Hughes and Powers. But both these teams have played together for so long that it's for them it's really, you know, it, it, in terms of teammates, it's really like riding a bike. They, they, they know what they're doing. And do you think there's anything with, you know, what happened in the Nationals, if there was anything like – a statement match is this a, a statement match for either one team or not really you know just not really getting, getting, getting into the season do you think yeah just starting the season out getting into the flow of things i think you know really for these top players they're really working towards that national title they're working towards you know being at their peak in the end of february early march season that's what they're really going for i mean there's certainly some good money on the line today because of the great sponsors that we have here like good route, but um, you know, they're there. There's more than just that for these guys. They're playing for their pride. Um, good game there. Yeah. Very quick. Don't you think? I mean, some quick points, saw some drives into the net. Durant and Mitchell have now taken a two, one lead. Um, I wouldn't say that the pace of play has been very slow at this point. You know, it's, so it's been kind of some fast points and missed drives. Yeah, missed I, overheads, but, you know, I think they're still, you know, again, feeling each other out. Although they know they're very common foes, these two teams. Yeah, good serve there by Hughes. That's the one that I personally like to Duran if I was a lefty. I'd like to try to go down the middle, make a move a little bit more to his left to hit that shot. Um, 15 all. Bad miss there by Hughes. Not one that uh, he typically misses. Don't like that serve to Durant. That's the one we watched last time with Humphreys. It just, he's got such a big wingspan. You try to go out wide. It really just narrow, it just, it's right in his wheelhouse. I mean, not that there's not many forehands he doesn't like, but, um, and I know you got to mix it up, but at the end of the day, I just think you got to keep Durant moving to the left. You don't want him going to the right, hitting that shot. So you don't think John has any chance for that serve to hit the side screen and die? I have because Johan is able to is able to get there. That's the difference. Yep. Yeah. Good backhand there by Powers. Mitchell tries to sneak over and take it as a backhand, just a little too much on it. Took a little too much of a swing, and the ball goes wide.
Longest point of the match so far right here. So interesting. Jeff, I thought that when these two played in the national championship, as far as watching that match, the commentating from Mark Fischel would suggest that um, the, the team that was playing from the backcourt was making was winning most of the points and it, it, it was a warm day so the ball was hot off the screens but do you do you give an advantage to the team at net with the weather or yeah not? neither I, yeah i mean neither one of these teams want to be playing from the back they want to be playing from the front it doesn't matter i don't think whether the war whether the weather is warm or whether it's cold certainly in that match i'm sure mark had a good view of it he saw what was happening mark fischel um, and maybe, you know, that he's probably right. Mark Fischel is usually right. Um, but players just don't want to play from the back. They might do it for a short period of time. But at the end of the day, platform tennis is about is about taking the net, especially at the highest level. So we've got 2-2 two -two here. Sh sweatshirts are coming off. Yeah, they're getting, they're getting warmed up. They are warmed up. Yep. I'm going to declare that they are warmed up and they are into the match now. What do you think? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> they're they're ready. We're kind of back to square one here at two all. This is about where I like to start my sets at my age. At two all would be a lot better. I could probably still be playing, but uh, here we are, two all. Durant to serve. He's got that sidearm serve that he's been employing over the last few years. He... Both he and Stephen Mitchell use the sidearm serve where Hughes and Powers go with a traditional overhand, overhead tennis serve. Yeah, Hughes in particular doesn't like it. Um, he doesn't like returning it. He can't really get any enough pace on it at the, at the high level to really make a difference. So, you know, he, as I said before, he's just going to basically hit a slow roller, put the ball back in play. You're not going to see Mitchell or Durant probably miss any first volleys off of a Hughes return. No, 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 no. That looked wide to me. Yes, this really it was wide. wide. It yeah, was. Slow roller, so. Yeah, that's a tough ball to take care of and to, to – you know, get in the groove. Doesn't give you much pace. It's it's kind of below, almost below the net by the time you're striking it. So, very effective serve if you can uh, get enough spin on it. Oh, that's usually death. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, I saw that coming a mile away. A little slow push by John Hughes. He knows better than that. Probably just lack of playing right there. You can't hit a slow push shot to uh, with Durant or Mitchell or, quite frankly, any top player sitting at the net. So uh, that's a ball John Hughes normally lobs. They are now down 3-2 as a result. Yeah, John kind of hanging over the net. He knew he didn't. Uh, that wasn't a, a good shot selection. And you're right. That's uh, the point will be ended pretty quickly if you're giving a 50%, 75%. Great drive. move there by Mitchell. Very athletic play from all the way in the backhand court, driving his legs forward and reaching across and making a great stab volley for a, for a free point. Spectacular overhead there. Not a spectacular overhead there. But a great get by by Hughes to be able to retrieve that. I mean, we're drive. I'm not lying to you. We're a good we're a good thirty yards away, and we're in an enclosed space with the window slightly cracked open. And that shot that Durant just hit a minute ago, you could hear in here the <laughs> pop that came off that paddle. Thought there might be a hunting club nearby, Jeff. That was loud. <laughs> Ooh, almost a let cord winner, but it didn't go over. And we have uh, Love 30. We're yeah. at a turning point right here. This, you know, this is the sixth game. We got Love 30. Need a big. Oh, really jammed him up. Jammed him up there. Got it into his body. Great serve. 
You knew Durant was going to swing at it. I can't remember the last time Durant hit a lob return, but a really good serve at a really crucial time. Oh, oh what crazy, hands man. all over the place here. Unbelievable. Hans Doop. Hans Doop is in the house. Yeah. Hans Doop, one of the legends of the Long Meadow area from back in the day. He's mostly retired, but still playing a little bit of paddle here at the field club over at LCC, all over the place. Great hands exchange there. Johan winning that one, right? Johan did win that one, and we are now at 1540. He sneaks one off to the side, back screen, pops it up, get out of the way before oh, you get hit, did. and he did just miss it. He missed him. Wow, I thought he, I thought he might have clipped Hughes, but he did not. Not going to lie, he was definitely trying to hit him. Moonball. Never easy to deal with the moon ball, especially late at night. That is not a good overhead there by Hughes. That push down the middle is getting taken advantage of a little bit by Mitchell. Great spin there. Yes, very nice. Great spin overhead by Mark Powers. Brings him back to Deuce. They are going into the Aussie formation again. What's he going to do with the serve? And He's going to plaster go. it. Yeah, that's what happened. I think this is what Hughes and Powers want as far as lengthening the point. But wow. Yeah, that's, see, oh, that's just, it's just great very, shot. very dangerous shot. Dangerous shot by Powers there. Just too slow. If you're going to hit it that slow, you've got to go high. And really, you, you, I mean, you, you typically would not think – because Johan is bringing most of the offense, but Stephen Mitchell has a lot of offense. Oh, is they, I mean, they play really, they really take advantage of what, you know, Johan. Great shot there by Powers. Really good spin. Another one. It's the low lobs that have been really, both teams have been taking advantage of the low lob. Get that lob up high, folks. Get it up there. Get it up high. I think Powers thinks that ball might have landed out, and he did not call it. Oh, and I'm not sure Hughes saw it. So I am not, not sure. sure. We're not sure what the score is here, but we're certainly going to know after this point is over one way or another. Powers is going back. You can tell he's not happy. So he I'm going like to go with just by that reaction that it's likely add out, but we're going to find out momentarily. Oh, oh, what just, a lob. Yeah, great return. Oh, that was an angry backhand. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. He missed two of those backhands before, but that one he made sure of. And Great play right. right there. All right, so I'm it sure looks he's like it good. was. He's feeling, he's, he's feeling good that I he don't know won that point. Mentally, maybe he's not back to normal, but at least they won that point <laughs> because otherwise there could have been an implosion. I mean, Mark Powers is one of the rares. He just stays right in there no matter where the serve goes. Durant has yet to lob a return in this match. What do you think? Is the over-under one for lobbing a uh, return a serve for Durant? For I don't match? know. I don't know. You're going to take the under on, on one? one? I'm one and gonna, a half? I'm probably going to take the over, but not, not by much. Another great return. Oh, it 
pops in. Yeah, they they got Mitchell. They got Mitchell where they want him. Yes. On the wrong side. They're just really going to try to keep him there. I'm sure. Here comes the switch. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love. would not. I probably on that one. I would have let Hughes just keep taking the overheads until Mitchell was done. But they got away with it. Durant misses the lob long, and we've got add point for Hughes Powers. I mean, these hands, is that's God, just unbelievable. Crazy. I mean, you can't shoot a gun off as fast as those three balls came back and forth. Oh, but you can shoot that. Boom. We got you. That's a tag. Tattoo. John Hughes. Wow, that was hit hard. That was hit hard. People outside are laughing. They're not laughing at John. They're laughing at how hard that ball was hit. John's going to need some KT tape tomorrow or whatever it is in order just to take care of that bruise that he's going to suffer. Oh, boy. And then That's Powers good. misses that backhand. Add out. Powers taking his time. Oh, and he's missed it wide. Similar to the one that Mitchell missed before. It's right there. It's on his paddle. He was in perfect position. Just caught it a little bit late as he tried to get it into the corner. It goes wide, and we've got 4-2 Mitchell Durant. Fifteen love. Great coverage by Johan Durant on that volley. Puts it low near the snowboard. Too tough to handle. For, for John Hughes. Let's it go through. That's two quick points here in this big game, this big seventh game. It's 30 love. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Johan Durant is shaking his head a little bit. He got a little lucky there with the let cord. Powers goes over. Durant charges in. Ball was still below the level of the net. Didn't work out so good. Tough, unforced error there. Well, I think we've got 40-15. Boom. Oh, goes with the spinner. I thought he was going to do the hard roller right at Hughes and make him chase another one down. Mitchell covering for, uh, I like to see that. Very mobile at the net, covering for Johan. There's, we're getting some good high lobs right there. That one course was high and long so that's not good <laughs> but that lob was at least nice and high it's now 5-2 Durant Mitchell match is moving right now a little too quick I think this is a time grab some water figure things out slow things down Mitchell Durant it's clear you watch them play. They get up. They get faster. Mitchell walks around faster and faster and faster. Wants to go, 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 go. Looks like they are taking their time. This is experience right now. Slow things down. Get the game going. Talk things over. They're smiling. Still happy. So this is not where you would suggest my, my tactic of the delay tactic. It would just be more strategic, get into this. Regard. I would do this. I would do a delay. <laughs> I, I mean, I wouldn't probably do it at quite right now. I'd probably wait. But, I mean, it's an effective strategy. You got 
they give you a, they give you a certain amount of time between changeovers. They give you a certain amount of time between serves. And sometimes it's okay to do that, to take your time. It looks like they're getting a new ball right now. Getting a new um, ball. Powers is taking his, his uh, sweats off. And so, yeah, I, I definitely think that they are playing. The pace of play is definitely suitable for, for Durant and Mitchell. It's exactly how they want it to be played. And the new ball has been put into play from the fans. They go a little while. They're warming it up. I'd like to give a big shout out here before the seventh game to a wonderful sponsor of this event, Palm Ball. Have you heard of Palm Ball? I have not heard of Palm Ball, but I've, I've now very interested to try it. It looks like a very, very fun game. It is outstanding. A local person here, Steve Creelman, is the owner, inventor, CEO of Palm Ball, another great racket sports game that's played outdoors. It is an up-and-coming sport. Some have equated it to the rise of pickleball as to what's going to be coming up. So for those of you interested in taking a look at a new game and sport with rackets, I highly suggest that you take a look at Palmball, palmball.com. Very cool. I'm going to have to try it. So I'm going to take a look at it. Maybe it'll be a, a gift for uh, the holiday season. It's a great, it is. It's a great gift. All right. I think we've got, uh, we've got something for a score here, but Durant missed a forehand on one of those wide ones, a very, it's almost like I think once in a while he might even do it on purpose just to encourage people to hit it over there <laughs> some other time, like when the point is like is crucial. But he happened to miss that one. Doesn't miss many. Is that kind of like a possum trick a little bit? Or you know I've seen him do it before. Actually, he's told me give a false sense of security that you can go into the corner. Yeah, you know, there's been some great hitters in baseball. Um, right, even like the Manny Ramirez's of the day and the and the, the the Bonds, they used to swing it at some really bad pitches on purpose early in the count, so that they would get that pitch later on and know it was coming and slam the whatever you want to call it out of it when the time was right. So uh, you know it can work. You do something like that at fifteen love, it's not a big deal. But we're back at five three, big game here. They really need a break, obviously, to stay in the set. And I don't know. What do you think you, of that decision? I think they've got to slow it down. And I think John has to put a lob up and make these guys play a little bit. They, they yeah, like I mean, the that drive. drive. Yeah, they, that ball was below the level of the net for those of you at home, right? Below the level of the net. Durant, you know he's charging in. Hughes doesn't have enough power, really, on his forehand to get it through. Durant and he's charging in two and you know at least twice in a row and and Powers just did the I mean it just did the same thing. Yeah, to your point, it's not a a, a driving shot that John Hughes was hitting. You had a spin on it, the top spin shot, but it's not. We got hard full, enough. We got not forty love. Enough. We got triple match point here. We got Chris Humphreys just checking out of the tournament from Short Hills. Felipe Osascone he will be back next year with Felipe Osascone, and they will be national. They are they're they're talking they're talking and national Dennis. title this year. I'm telling you, folks, they are talking national title. Okay, they're they managing need to stay in this. They game, need something like that. They absolutely need. They need something like that. And that's the one that Hughes likes, right? He let, that's yep. the one he likes. The high forehand is really the only power shot that he has. The high backhand as well, but the, anything up high to Hughes is the one he likes. It's the, the waist high, little below the level of that. That's not him. Those he's just got to lob. 
What was that? I'm not too sure about that, Jeff. That one is that something was that not a good decision. No, I've seen club players not do that. That looked um, like my shot. That's one of them. my favorite shots. Love them, but that was not not as bad. And it's so a side go, post. Yeah, they go down. They go down in that set, uh, six three, six three. Really, just kind of like you know, one or two game points here and there. They really never got the momentum going. Hughes and Powers. Duran and Mitchell really, I would say, dominated that set. I'm not going to call it a routine 6-3, but it was kind of a routine 6-3. Just too many mistakes out of Hughes and Powers. They just need to slow it down a little bit and extend this next set. Yeah, they definitely have to extend it. I mean, it looked like, to me, a you know first tournament of the – of the season for them, you know, it's a, it's the fourth match of the day, but definitely I, I think the pace of play was just, was way too fast and they need to be not hitting those three quarter drives. It, they have to go with the, if they have a good smash drive to hit, ab obviously go for it, but they can't, they can't be attempting those three quarter drives. There's another one. I mean, they're just dominating the net play with their return of serves. It's just a return, and the other player is attacking, and they're just Hughes and Powers are on the defensive right from the start. There's a very good serve. That's probably the one of the best serves of the uh, serves of the match right there by Powers. It's the first one that you know. I wouldn't say it wasn't a lob by any stretch by Durant, but it's the first one that he wasn't able to really smack. Love how uh, Johan Durant, you know, follows the ball. He really keeps his head down, head still when he's making contact with the lobs, even with the lobs. I have to be honest. I've seen him. It looks kind of funny. He <laughs> keeps his head down there. and You don't like that? I, I think it's kind of. I a, mean, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like traditional, but it kind of looks funny. He hits it and he keeps his head, keeps his head there after the fact. I don't know. Seems kind of a little bit of a weird look. I mean, if you're a beginner, I would say that's something you want to do. You really want to watch that ball all the way to the paddle and keep your head down, but it just looks funny with him doing it. Well, that's kind of how I look with my uh, my chips and golf. I got to make sure I'm keeping my head down. And that is a nice cutter from Johan. John and, and Mark Powers, they need to, uh, again, try to extend the point. A good tester by Hughes there. Again, has a high forehand. That's the one to take. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah, absolutely. I, I Absolutely, I think it is. I, I don't even mind seeing Hughes, you know, over on that side every once in a while. Just that, you know, because he's going to, he'll get that look. There's some good, good high lobs by Stephen Mitchell. Yeah, there when there, he was right. working Durant over a little bit in the corner. Probably, you know, a ball Durant can make, but it's not the shot that you want to hit they're gonna get a better look than that one right there and we have a score of uh, i think we need to check the crowd on this as to what the score actually is because it's not one one as shown on the screen it's got to be one zero because they just switched sides yeah this is the set score i believe so it's one love in one zero in sets for durant and mitchell and love one in the uh Second set to Hughes and Powers. That one hits the seam right there. Balls are started. There's some short ones. The balls are getting lower. They really need to get a lob up nice and high here. There we go. A little reset.
Durant playing the middle of the court and then hits a super cutter that would have bounced about 15 times in the box. Ends the point, 15 love Durant. So Durant and Mitchell, two-time, as partners, two-time national champions in 2020 and 2021. Durant has won five times in his career. Uh, both Stephen Mitchell and Johan, Dur Johan Durant are from South Africa. And as Jeff had pointed out at the beginning of the match, uh, both Hughes and Powers played college tennis in the state of Connecticut. Powers at Yale University and John Hughes at Quinnipiac. Good rip there by Powers after missing one of those same shots a couple of points ago. Rips it into the corner off of the screen and a clean winner return. Great shot. I really think from the back here watching this is that any of the, you know, I really think that if Hughes is hitting the ball, he really just needs to lob it the entire time. Just try to make really good lobs unless he gets a high forehand and leave any of the offense, any of the real offense or the risk taking to come from powers. What about the play of a, a, a blitz as far as a risk-taking from, from John Hughes? Do you think that's advisable, Jeff? I don't think – I mean, not a, really until, you know, Powers has something. I mean, right there, right? You, they just lengthen the point. They got a miss out of Durant. That seems to be what the play is, and I'd let that play continue unless you get a high one. I mean, even that, right? It's a great shot by Hughes against – 99 teams out of 100, that's probably, you know, a very effective shot. But here, there's a good one there, another high forehand, right? Something yes. off the screen that's a high forehand you can hit. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just got to be a lob. I, I'm not so sure that that last one was in right there. That one, uh, yeah, we don't have replay, close. but that one, I think when you go back and take a look at it, that one that was just hit by Durant, it might have been out. I'm not sure. And I don't mind that. That's a good play. Good lengthy point, and Powers is hanging his head, but it, that's the shot you want. You had Durant yeah. off the net. You had a Powers forehand opportunity to get that in and then charge forward to the net. Didn't happen, but it's all good. Oh, oh, he had the Yeah, good blitz that there. That was the good play. Right play, bad result, and now we are at one all second set. John Hughes to serve. Great pickup right off the shoestrings there. Mitchell with a wild swing. Hits the ball into the side screen, turns around not happy with himself. 15 love Hughes. And a shank serve. We've all done that. 15 all. So I stand corrected, Jeff. You were right 
when you mentioned that Johan Durant and Stephen Mitchell are the number one ranked team in the country. So as players, they are, from a national ranking standpoint, they are the number one team. Um, Sven Burris and Mick Ordoha are the second team from a player standpoint. So uh, while they are the national champions, um, Durant and Mitchell are the number one team with Mark Powers and John Hughes at the at the three spot from the national ranking perspective. I mean, I'm not going to tell you, but I'm, I'm not surprised that I was right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. I, I really didn't know. Obviously, all these teams are great. And it's, a you know, it, it, like I said, it's it, that's a great overhead there. But great overhead by Hughes. Really good. Close but long. Close yes. but long. Great overhead there. They're all great at any one time, given, you know, whatever the circumstances are, at least during the season, any one of them could be the number one team. So John tried to go wide on that, and um, Johan Durant hit a great drive return for a winner. It looks like we had a little let court on that one, too, but uh, yeah, that's a one Mitchell really likes. That's like the same sort of one that Hughes likes, right? A little slow, a little high, a little off the back screen, and boom. But he just got that one in the bottom of the net. Easily could have clipped the top and gone over, and now we have a slight lead for Hughes and Powers. Up 2-1 in the second set. Great. Good start for them in the second set. Absolutely. So they definitely need to hopefully stick their nose out in front and see what they can do. Great. Stephen Mitchell to serve. Oh, great play there by Durant. Brought John Hughes forward, sprinted in, made a great get, then a great little roller to the corner. Mark Powers tried to run over and get it, but it was just perfectly placed. Mark Powers got there, but just pushed it a little wide. 15 love. Great backhand right there. Hughes and Powers able to take the net as a result. Wide lob, and we have a score of love. Sorry, 15 all. So Durant and Mitchell, they had won the Chicago Charities National Ranking Tournament and part of the uh, the APT Tour. Um, they they beat Chris Humphreys and Felipe Osis Coney, who were who were. Um, participants in this tournament although they were playing with different partners and uh they are the fifth ranked team uh osis koenig and humphreys but durant and mitchell have this is their third final of the season so far uh they lost earlier this year to burris and Erdoha, and burris and Erdoha are the 2022 national champions but Durant and Mitchell have been playing a good amount of tournaments this year with, again, Hughes and Powers, this being their first tournament of the season. So they took a little bit of time off from last season. They had made the finals. They lost to Burris and Erdoha in the finals. and uh, But they're, now they're back, and they're here on John Hughes' home court. This is his home club. And... Uh, you know, they're, they're getting a feel for the season, playing against, the, you know, again, their familiar foes. Absolutely. This set literally looks like they're playing a little bit better, slowing the points down, waiting for, being a little more patient and waiting for mistakes, if any, by Durant and Mitchell. Great backhand by. And we've got a 3-1. Three by one. Powers. We've got 3-1 here. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Erdoya. Erdoja, also known as Erdoya, 
former partner of mine, Mick Ardoya, great friend, great paddle player, and an even better person, um, primarily because he put up with me for a couple of seasons, despite my age, my lack of athletic ability, my poor mentality, my bad partnership, but he's a great guy. Would have loved to see him here this week, but I know he's got some other stuff going on. He wasn't able to make it along with a couple of other people. Um, but we'll see him soon. Him and Sven Burris back out on the tour very soon, trying to defend their national championship title as uh, they've got many suitors that are going to come after them, including these two teams here on this playing here at Longmeadow. It actually all started for Ardoya and Burris right here in Longmeadow. They had, I think, their first, if I'm correct, their first NRT win was right here a few years ago on their way to becoming uh, national champions two years later. So Mick must have learned very fast from you, Jeff. I mean, Jeff, you are a three-time national champion. And so he must have learned quite a bit from you because – I remember playing Sven here in this tournament with Michael Montalbano, Monty, as we know. And I don't think Mick Erdoha was in the picture then. Now, this was probably a decade ago. But would you say that Mick has been relatively new? I mean, he's, he and Sven have been, a, have been a partnership. But how many years did you play with, with Mick? Played a couple years. I mean, they're both they're both great. They're I mean, they're great players. They're great people. They're great pros. They're great racket professionals. They know you know they work for great clubs. I've you know I've talked to them both, you know, on and on and off the court over the years. And um, you know they they've worked really hard at their game, like all these players do, to get to where they were. And it was uh, I was really excited for uh, for Burris and really excited for Adoya. It's really exciting to see people who work so hard to achieve a goal actually get to that goal. And I had the same feeling when, you know, when Johan won his, Durant won his first title, when I watched John Hughes win his first one, when I saw Raya win his first one, um, and to see Erdoya and Burris win their first one, it's just, it's really exciting. I mean, there's nothing, there really is nothing like uh, the first one that you you win. And I'm I'm far from a three-time national national champion i've won a couple of old age a couple of old age divisions uh with some with some great partners um that's probably my biggest skill is partner selection when you select partners like uh that are all national champions and former national champions like a mike stulak and a juan araya um you're gonna be you're always gonna be in the mix so i appreciate all those players playing with me along the way and um i've been fortunate enough to play in tournaments with two of the four players on the court who have donated their time to me along the way. So it's, uh, it's great, but we'll get back to, we'll get back to this great match as it's, uh, oh, oh very nice. Fans great cutter. all over the place outside with that great backhand cutter by Mark powers. Not many people can do that off the one handed backhand side, but he can, and that's what makes him great. Durant missing that one wide, seeing more mistakes right now out of Durant Mitchell. I have to say, unless this bus turns around, the fans are going to get what they want. A lot of extra time at the uh, in the beer booth, a lot of extra food, and a lot of extra paddle. But for now, it's just going in the wrong direction for Durant and Mitchell. It is. We are now at 4-1, and the bus is going to need to turn around. Or you and I are going to get to spend a little bit more time together, Matt. It looks like it. 4-1 for Hughes and Powers in the second set. Durant and Mitchell won the first set. A pretty quick 6-3. But now Hughes and Powers have jumped out front. And they are looking pretty confident right now. Steve Mitchell is in the red on the left-hand side of your screen, the upper part of the screen. Johan Durant just hit that fantastic cutter 
Hey, Brad, is anybody cooking? Mark Powers returning in the blue. And his partner, John Hughes, in the white. This is the finals of the Western New England National Ranking Platform Tennis Tournament. Stephen Mitchell in the red and Johan Durant about to serve are the number one ranked team in the country, playing the number three ranked team in the country. And they are the one and two seeds respectively for this tournament. Durant and Mitchell beat Friedrich and Humphreys in the semifinals to get here. And Hughes and Powers beat Osis Koenig and Dennis in the in their semifinal. Dennis also an up and coming player, one of the I, I wouldn't say youngsters because it seems like everybody's a youngster, but Hughes and I played against him last year. Very good player. I watched him today and compared to when even when we played against him last year to where he is now, you can just see the development. You can see it getting better and better. I can clearly see him being, you know, maybe not a top four player down the road or a top four team, but certainly within the top top 15, 16 seed in the very, very near future. And who knows what his future will hold after that. It's very bright. Great play there. Durant tried to sneak over with his long, great speed and long reach. Just wasn't able to get it behind Mitchell. So, Jeff, would you agree with the range of Durant like that, which is phenomenal, but the range of Hughes from the backcourt as far as being able to scrape balls off the screens is a is a great skill to have but durant's range from a net perspective is probably unparalleled would you agree with that yeah i mean i think everybody would, would agree with oh he missed it wide he missed it wide i don't know if he actually hit hughes or not but the ball goes wide i don't know what Did happened running right to the there. net though he might have he might have Oh, almost uh, got it. Great athleticism right there. Guys running around all over the court, but Durant is really now just wants to get them back into it, wants to get a break here. I don't like that serve. I just would like to see Hughes go down the middle, make Durant move to the left. Seems like I'm repeating that over and over again, but he just keeps going wide and it just keeps getting worse. Even just seeing if Hughes would change the location of where he's standing to start the serve, something. He's got to tr try to do something different to get Durant out of the rhythm that he's in on that return of serve right now. Ooh, almost got it. What a good shot. Durant gets it into the corner. Powers digs down. He bends down low, tried to flick it over with the backhand, hits the top of the net. Slight advantage there to Durant. Oh. Interesting here, you're seeing Durant and Mitchell switch sides in the back. It's very interesting. I mean, before, I will say, it did seem like Powers was having his, I wouldn't say having his way. Oh, big miss there by Hughes. But was really playing the Powers, was really playing the ball into the Mitchell corner quite a bit. That's, I think, what got him up 4-1. 
They've switched sides in the back. Now you're seeing Hughes take more of the overheads to continue to try to play Mitchell in the backcourt. Um, and now that little strategy has worked, and it has brought us to a 4-3 change. What do you think, Matt? No, I think you're right. I'm, I'm surprised to see Mitchell on the deuce side because I know historically he's had issues with Hughes's overhead, or they may, maybe try to minimize the exposure of Hughes hitting hitting that overhead. But uh, yeah, they've they've uh, played two very good games, Mitchell and Durant. They're going for a change of the ball uh, again, probably because of the probably because of this the. the um, the the spin the that they're that they're imparting on the ball, taking off the flocking of the balls, and so here they are. They're going to warm this ball up and get ready to go. Yeah, I just think this is a big game right now for Hughes Powers. The momentum has started to turn just a little bit back towards Durant and Mitchell. Four one, they were on the verge. If they got one of those games, really would have put them at five two and. Brought us into that third set. He just slams it right out with a new ball. Just slams it right up high at Durant. Hits him. I have to say, as a as a former player, if you hit Durant, I don't really care. It feels good. It's very <laughs> rare. It is very rare thing to do, and it feels good. You don't want to smile. You don't want to smirk. You don't want to look at him and point and say, gotcha. But it does feel good. You just want to turn around and smile to yourself. Is that harder, uh, either hitting Durant or not smiling? What's harder, hitting him or not smiling after hitting him? Hit, hitting him <laughs> is harder. Smiling comes natural. <laughs> is Johan Durant um, known for hitting people? Would you say he's good get there by Hughes? Another little half volley. He's not afraid to do it. I can tell you that. Is there anyone on the tour that APT tour that would be that is notorious for hitting people or going after people? Yeah, would nobody, you say? Nobody, I think, does it really as a tactic. Know. Not really, not really, not on purpose. That's not a big, purpose. that's a big return by you know, Powers. The, the new ball, right I will there. Say, you know, one of the pro, one of the disadvantages of the new ball coming into play when you have an underhand serve is that it's lively because it's coming into play from a very warm in, from a very warm environment. So it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be lively and a little bouncier. And when you have that sidearm serve with a new ball that's coming into play, if it's coming from inside a hut like that one. It bounces up higher than the ball you've been playing with the entire time. So it makes returning that serve actually a little bit easier. And the uh, sidearm serve is a little bit of a disadvantage. So another cutter by Johan right there. Just so difficult to read. And it just caught, it looks like it caught uh, Hughes by surprise. Which is in play, getting Durant over on the big point, especially getting Durant over to the left hand side so that he can take the majority of the overheads. Yeah, really need to. Oh, that's the one. Oh, he got, got caught. Him. That's the yep. one, though. That's the one that Hughes likes. Good opportunity there. And I think we are back to Deuce. They really had an opportunity there, needed to take advantage of it. Durant misses it wide, and we are now at add-out opportunity here. I think we're going to see Mark Powers take a big rip at this one. And he did take a rip at it. Unfortunately, it went into the snowboard for Mark Powers. Yeah, Fortunately, a good opportunity for right Mitchell, there. good return. 
Hughes, for the first time, really, the whole match, snuck a return through the middle. And there it is. Like I said, if he can get Durant moving a little bit to the left, he's certainly capable of hitting it, but he makes more errors when you can get him to move to the left. They got to hit better lobs if they want to try to win this one. Little better there. Durant really dominating right now. Really dominating with his spins. That was three oh, or four tough. in a row. Can't give him three or four short ones in a row. It's going to be over, and that one was. So another deuce. Steven Mitchell serving at three serving four. Mitchell and Durant won the first set. It's now second set, three serving four. And this is, I think, the third deuce of this game. Good location right there. Not a lot of power, like I said. He's not a lot of power. Really spots his drive. Got it in the right spot at the right hip. Oh, a let cord right there. And that goes long because of the new warm ball. Durant was poaching. He had him behind, but it just clicks the top of the net and goes long. Back to Deuce. Good point here. Good lobs. Long point. Durant being very patient on the deep ones. It just looks like he's making sure he gets those in play. Wouldn't call it a push overhead, but it's just making sure that it's not in a spot where can anybody can get offensive. Big, big point right there. Missed this is by a, Mitchell. Another ad. Another this is about ad. The third or fourth ad. I think you're going to see Powers do it. He just kind of probes and it in there. And he misses it. And the off pace drive catches Mitchell off guard, thinking Powers was going to rip another one. Goes wide. We've got 5 3 Powers to serve. Second set. Oh, what a move by Mitchell going in, stretching across. Sticking the volley with great soft pace behind Powers. Love 15. And Hughes misses. Now Love 30. Misses a volley. Not happy with himself right there. A little bit of a head shake from Mark Powers as well. <laughs> Wow, great cutter by Stephen Mitchell. Now love 40. I mean, they're, you know, you, they having a chance here to serve it out, and they haven't even put themselves in this game. Mitchell and Durant really fighting to stay in this set, giving it their all right now. Up love 40, down 5-3, knowing that if they can pull this out, they then have Durant serving next. Got a real chance to bring it back to five all. See if they can get here. They go to the Australian, 15-40. Good serve, big rip. 
Hughes reaches across with the forehand. They take control of the net, and the point begins. I'd expect to see with Mitchell on that side right now that Hughes is going to take almost all the overheads, and that's exactly what you're going to see from here on out if that happens. Hughes brings them back with a very good overhead. Mitchell a little more uncomfortable on the do side, certainly than the ad side. And we now have, oh, great return. Great, great stab volley by Mark Powers. We now have 40-30. So, sorry, 30-40. Still break point. Good high lob right there. Just, that's just dangerous. Hughes got away with it. Durant reached a little too far, but that is not a shot that I like to see out of Hughes. It's a ball that Durant loves. He loves that reaching forehand. Uh, serve was long. So now it's add out. Power serving for the set. However, it is add out. For Durant and Mitchell to get it to 4-5. Durant and Mitchell won the first set. 6-3. Good volley there by Hughes off of the big slam by Durant. The, oh, oh, what a tricky little play right there. Oh, and he hits the top of the net and it doesn't go over. Stellar point all around. Really well played. Great reaction by Yo Johan Durant. But Stephen Mitchell tried to hit that drive down the line. Missed it. Oh, it's the off Nick. of the Nick. And Mitchell starts flying around the court, walking as fast as he possibly can back to return the next ball. He definitely gets that pace going when he's when he's feeling it, right? He just he does, and you can see it. This is a precarious situation right now for Hughes and Powers. They're in the backcourt, Durant and Mitchell at the net, and Hughes not happy with himself right there. He knows that that was not the shot, needed to lob it up and work their way into that point. And he did not. He went for this. I don't even know what that was right there under those circumstances. But now they're still up 5-4. They've got a shot. They're returning Durant to serve. See if they pull this one out. He might have been trying to play a little bit of cat and mouse with Johan Durant with that chip backhand. Is that advisable to play not cat and mouse? A good idea. Right here, we got Durant and Mitchell to serve. Let's see if they can. Uh, let's see if they can pull this one out. I mean, the local fans are out there. They're a little. They're cheering on John Hughes. They really want to see a third set. They want to have a little extra party favors here for. They want to have another forty-five minutes to an hour of paddle to watch. But Durant and Mitchell not wanting to go any longer. So we'll see if they can pull out this game and get it to five all. I like to see those good high lobs, nice and deep. What a shot by Durant. A cutter from above his shoulder leaves it short. Even Hughes with his power and his speed could not get in to lob that one back up. 15 love Durant Mitchell. Nice return. Ripper. Very much needed at this point. Hammered. That first point went a couple of minutes. The second point went about half of a second. 
Hughes we're at 30, hit that 15. long. Yep, like you said, the the sidearm serve is not a favorite, and those two returns dumped into the net. We're at 40-15 right here. This one looks like it's going to be a little bit of a little comeback here for Durant Mitchell. I like to see it. I like to see the heart and the fight. 30-40. Let's see what Powers can do with this one. See if Durant puts this one in. Got Powers. He rips over. He goes, gets it, reach, reaches across just outside the reach of Hughes. And we are now at five all in the second set. Momentum is slightly turning. What a return by Durant off that wide serve. Unbelievable. Have you been talking about that wide serve that's not advisable to the Durant forehand? It's just I've Sounds watched like it you've for been a <laughs> number of years. I know I've seen it. It's I'm not saying that the you know something down the middle or into the body doesn't come back with similar type of pace. It's just he just misses it occasionally a little bit more. Mitchell over on the backside. Interesting there that they were having powers hit those balls. Oh, it, it net cord out of bounds. Now it's love, love 30. 30. Oh, that's a great volley great by Stephen volley Mitchell. By Mitchell. He's been cutting across the entire time off of that Durant serve. This time he comes in straight, sees it so well off of Hughes's paddle. And now we are at love 40. Back to back, back to back games, by the way, that um, Mitchell and Mitchell and Durant have been up love 40 and a missed overhead there by Powers. And we are now at six, five Durant Mitchell with an opportunity to win this second set and come back from five, three down to take the Western New England title. So Stephen Mitchell now to serve at 6-5 for the match in title, as Jeff just said. And then they've now won three games in a row. Good dig there by John Hughes. I think, oh, and a un characteristic miss by Johan Durant <laughs> on a routine overhead down the middle in a big game like this. There it oh, he is just so good up there at the net. He's just, he's big, you know, he's almost over the net, but he's not over the net when he poaches and he takes that first ball. Almost hit the nick right there. That would have been another just clean winner. And he does catch it there. This is a big problem. And there it goes. Nothing Mark Powers could do there. It's almost like a nick, nick, heavy cutter. 30-15 Mitchell. Johnny tried the Johnny tried Johnny Hughes tried the little short little cutter kind of touch ball after putting coming in and closing great athleticism by Hughes to come in and close it out put it behind Mitchell Mitchell was fast enough to go back and get it we now have triple match point wow there's a boomer you knew that was coming can he get that one too he does what oh and he hits him on match point they are all laughing up there, but they got him in the left-hand shoulder. 
Lots of hugs between the fans. People are applauding all over the place. Great athletic match. Good start to the season by Powers and Hughes. Unfortunately, they just weren't able to close it out in that second set and give the fans what they wanted, a third set. And we got the winners of our tournament again. Johan Durant, Stephen Mitchell, the number one team in the country, taking down number three team in the country, Mark Powers and John Hughes. What a match. The fans loved it. Great atmosphere here at the Field Club of Long Meadow. I just like to give a big shout out to the tournament directors. A great group of people that put on this wonderful event. Steve McKenna, technical director. Mike Shields with the video. Per Nielsen, who makes it all happen from start to finish. Volunteers all over the place. Dave Appleman, stellar, 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 as always. Unbelievable. There's just so many people that have helped out in this event. I can't even tell you. Another year under the books. We'll be back again next year. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. And thank you all for being Platform Tennis players, fans, and spectators. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 <laughs>